Welcome to Uptown Rumble, heavy music in the Bronx. My name is Stephen Payne, director of the Bronx County Historical Society. Today is November 3rd, 2024, and I'm here with members of Nervous Wreck. I'm excited to hear uh, about all of their individual and shared histories. Um, but first of all, uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves. John, you want to go first? Sure. Uh, my name is John Riley. I'm the guitar player from Nervous Wreck. And uh, I've been with these guys, well, probably over 30 years now, right? And uh, I don't know, I keep, I'm not a big talker, so that's what I mean. Okay, great. Well, we'll, we'll get more into things with you, John. Uh, Cliff. Yes, hey, um, my name's Cliff McLaren. Um, I, I, where do I begin? I'm a bass player for Nervous Rock, and I also play bass for uh, Peace Revolver, with, with the project with Dominic we did in the 90s. Uh, and uh, we all write the songs, all, all of us together, you know. Um, but we've been around since, like, I guess it came back in 1988. We wow. all met, all of us. Wow, wow. Looking forward to hearing more about that. Uh, Dom? I'm Dom Sandler. I play the drum for Nervous Shrek, and in past products, projects I've played with uh, Cruciform and On Edge. And I met these guys in 1990, and we've been a family ever since. That's great. That's great. Well, thank you all for being here. Um, let's start off with uh, hearing a little bit more about your family histories and background, how your family ended up in the Bronx, if you know that. Um, John, you want to go first? Um, I was born and raised in the Bronx, you know. Um, I don't know what to say. But where, where? To? to no, I, I grew up around Burke Avenue and I moved over here to 209th Street and then from there to 208th Street with Cliff. Uh -huh. We lived together. We had a band apartment. For like many years, Studio. a couple of years before, that's when we met Dominic. He came in like second year after he had the apartment over there. Right? Oh wow! How how old were you when you moved to this part of the Bronx from Burke? Oh wow, probably eleven. Okay. Eleven or twelve, yeah. Do you have uh, very many like memories from Burke Avenue? What no, not too there? many. It's more of uh, I didn't start getting into that back then. I played drums and a little bit of the keyboard. I didn't learn the guitar until I moved over here, like in this area. Ah, that's okay. when I went to a Van Halen concert. I was like, wow, I gotta learn how to play guitar, and uh, I went from there. And I started a bunch of original projects, and I didn't start playing covers until I met Cliff back uh, in what eighty eight. Eighty eight. Yeah, eighty eight. We... So, wow. Well, originally I was an all original guitar player. Came up with my own stuff from from day one really now before you went to that van halen concert which i'll, I'll ask you a little bit more about in a second uh uh how'd you become interested in playing drums oh my grandmother bought me a drum set when i was a kid <laughs> i bet your parents loved that right, right actually right on gun hill road right across from the van to high school there used to be a small mom and pop music store there and that's where i got my first royce drum set wow and then i combined it with a love wig so i had a double bass and all that then we used to practice in the apartment on 208 Street, no, 209 Street rather. But I was, I had to be what, 17 maybe at that time? Wow. When yeah. you when you first started playing drums, like, was there a style that you were interested in or listening to at the time? Well, back then it was more like, I mean, all the heavy stuff wasn't really out yet. Yeah. So it was more like Sticks, Kiss, you know, bands like that. A little bit of, uh, I think Toto was one of the bands that was coming around, like uh -huh. old, old school, old school. That's I didn't right. start getting into the heavier stuff till Sabbath came out. You know, the first album of Sabbath, Sabbath, Valley Sabbath, or yeah. Black Sabbath, Sabbath, Black Sabbath. I think I heard yeah. that in the back of uh, 57 Schoolyard. And we were like, wow, I got to learn how to play it like that. And that's mm -hmm. when we started getting really heavy. Wow. So did you go to PS57? No, I you? went to St. Brendan's. Oh, I see, I see, I see. What, what, what was that like for you? Yeah, it was all right. I only did two years at St. Brendan's, and I went to Cardinal Hayes for like four years, you know. Okay, okay. So I was okay. in the area for a good part of my younger days, up to like 20s, you know, 22, I think. And they, were, um, were either your parents or, or both of them like into... Uh, into rock music at all? What kind of music? Did no, you they to? they went to like Elvis. That was ah, Presley. okay. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Which I actually like Elvis too. Elvis is awesome. You know, I think we actually did a couple of Elvis songs. Remember? Wow. Didn't we? Just for yeah, our covers, did, we did yeah. do a couple of Elvis songs. Wow. Just in our in our uh, Heart, medley. Heartbreak like, Hotel. We did. Right. Yeah, we used to do that. <laughs> Heartbreak Hotel. But we we mix in like three sets. We start off with a slow rock set. Then go build it up to like a, rock, a heavier rock set. Yeah, then all originals at the end, which were heavy. Uh -huh. Like Metallica Slayer and then originals. We build it up. 
start off a rock and roll and build it up. Yeah. You know. I see, I see. I think, where was that place? No Town Lounge? No Town Lounge, yeah. We used to play with Play the last piece over here on Gunner Road when they were open. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, That's when we first started, you know, a while back. So, going back to that, that first Van Halen concert that you went to, do you remember where that concert was? Oh, that Madison Square Garden. Oh, at the Madison Square Garden. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, did you remember around how old you were at that time? I had to be... 17. 17, okay. Yeah. Okay, wow. And, and how long was it before you went to that concert and when, when you started playing guitar? Oh, right away. Right away. Huh? Right away, I went out and bought a guitar the next week. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and I've been practicing ever since. You know. what, what guitar did you buy? What was your first one? Oh, the first one was a piece of crap. It was like a Harmony beat up. It looked like a Hawaiian guitar. <laughs> and I didn't even have great equipment at the time. I think I used a Fender Bassman head and a PA column with a tube driver just to get a good sound. Mm -hmm. And we were actually used the PA, uh, our PA was my stereo system. Yeah. Oh, Fisher wow. Stereo would push record and play with an echo box, like a DOD echo chamber. And we used that for a PA and it sounded okay from back then. <laughs> wow. You know, we were kids, so it was like, you know, do what we got, you know, use what we have. Any kind okay. of amplification. Yeah. Well, that was starting out. Now I have a triple rectifier and, you know, uh -huh. BC okay. Rich, I played. A lot better equipment now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so before you went to that Van Halen concert, were you playing and you played drums? Were you playing in any bands or just playing on your own? Well, actually, I had an original band. It was called Midnight's Revenge. Oh, and it was okay. myself. My my brother was involved. And then we got another drummer, Anthony. He passed away. Uh, so I think Joe Torre was singing at the time. Oh boy, yeah. Uh, yeah, but we had an original band and we used to practice at Trilogy up in uh, Tuckahoe Road up there. Uh huh. So that's, you know, between the apartment and then we'd go up there to record and stuff like that. Okay, and, and what kind of, what, what was kind of the, the general uh, vibe of the sound? Like a hard rock, like Sabbath-ish type yeah. feel to it. I see, I see. Did you all play shows? With uh, no, we were about to and then the band broke up because the singer and I had a falling out, so. I see, I see, I see, I see. We all kind of went on different ways at that point. I see, and, but that was your first band? That was my first band, yeah. Wow, and when you started playing guitar, how long was it before you joined up with another band? Uh, right after that, uh, I was in Cardinal Hayes and I met Jeff, Jeff Marlowe. So he's another g great guitar player. Uh, and we, we kept the name Midnight's Revenge because I came up with it back in the day. And I stayed with them for a few years uh, we played a couple of shows. I think we did like Battle of the Bands at Lehman High School, oh, stuff like that. Oh, sure, 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 you sure. You know, sure. we did a couple of venues. I don't remember it so long ago, but uh, that's where we kind of started with, with speed metal. I see. I was going to ask, that, that's what I was going to ask you next, if your sound shifted. Oh, yeah, metal, definitely. Yeah. It went from like a Sabbath feel to like a speed metal feel. I see. Yeah. I like Slayerish, but you know, a little still hard rock in there mixed in. Yeah, sure. You know, a little bit of everything. I see. And any recordings with that version of Midnight's Revenge? Uh, recordings, let me see. I think Jeff probably has a couple of them. I don't have any of it anymore. Uh, but we had another, I left that band because they wanted to, to call the band something ridiculous and I, I wasn't having it. I see. So I, I said, you know what, I'm out. I see, I see. It was I one see. of those. Good musicians, but... I just wasn't, it wasn't my field, so I had to go. <laughs> I see. And this is, I'm, I'm guessing, what, like late 80s we're talking about? Yeah, late 80s, uh, probably 84, 5. Oh, okay, okay, 84, 5. 84, 5, 86, around there. Like three years, I would say, I was with those guys. I see. In really? 87, I left for a little bit, and that's when I came back and met Cliff. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. I see. And were you going to very many, like, Concerts around the New York area. Oh yeah, every Friday and Saturday was Lemores. Okay, you know? yeah. Every, like Friday nights would be either Queens Lemores or on Saturdays yeah. with Brooklyn. Uh -huh. So we had the heavy bands. We always go to see the heavy bands. So it was Friday night or Saturday night, but it was like every weekend Lemores, Lemores, Lemores. What What are some of the shows that like stick out to you from that period? Are there any like that you? Oh yeah, vividly Chrome remember? Mags. We used to see uh -huh. Biohazard. We We actually hung out with Biohazard. Evan used to hang out on the Parkway with us years ago. Uh, I'm trying to think what bands Slayer Slayer played there. 
shit to so many bands. I, I can't think even think think of them all. Agnostic Front. Yeah, that was a long time. I don't know. There was a lot of good bands back yeah, then. Yeah, a lot of good bands. Yeah, Nuclear Assault we see in there. Um, uh -huh. Wow, I can't even think of I could go on, but uh, there's so many bands I can't even think right now. Were, were you, when you went to shows, were you the kind of person who, like, would gravitate towards the pit, or did you stay away from it? No, I was in the pit. Okay, yeah, and, and what, yeah. What, what was that like for you? I used to like to mosh, you know, go out and have a good time. Yeah. You know? Any any crazy uh, pit stories? No, no. I, I never got, like, brutal. I used to just run around, and you know how it was yeah, fun yeah, back sure, in the day, sure. you know? Absolutely. I wasn't like the skinheads. They were, they were, they were brutal. Yes. They would, like, yeah. come out of the pit bloody. I uh -huh. didn't. I was no part of that. <laughs> Absolutely. I just went marching and used my arms for protection. But. Absolutely. <laughs> I've, I've heard some crazy stories from Slayer shows in particular. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they get brutal, I right? know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what about uh where would you go to get your music would you you know get it from like you know maybe bootleg copies from friends would you were there stores that you went went to what about that uh, a lot of them like a lot of bootleg copies we did not like bootleg but more of uh all right my friend had a, a couple of songs he wanted me to learn you know trade go back and forth trade songs that way and then uh, there was always tower records i think it, they were back like it was down the city, I think. Yeah. Right? Tower Records. That's right. There was a Tower Records down there. Crazy I think it was one up by Central Avenue a while back. I'm going way back though. But, I mean, they're not even around anymore. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's where we used to get our our sources from. Were Were you ever into like writing bands, you know, elsewhere, like kind of trading tapes that way? Did you ever do that? No, not really. Not yeah. really. No, we were mostly because I once I started original. You know, I wanted to stay as an original guitar musician, you know. Absolutely. I always came up with my own ideas, try to, you know. I mean, we all have influences, but I was to write my own stuff. Absolutely. I don't know, it's hard to explain that. Um, so, I'll ask you this question, then, you know, we'll, we'll come back and ask uh, the other members the same question, but uh, in, in your memory, how did you meet these two guys? What's the story of how you met them? Oh, how I met, I met Clifford and his brother Glenn first. Um, I had moved to Jersey right after I broke up with the Midnight's Revenge with Jeff. Uh, I took a break for about, about a year, I'd say. And then I, went, I was like, I gotta get back into a band. So as soon as I came back to New York from Jersey, like within the first day or two, I think it was, my brother had introduced me to Cliff and Glenn. They were looking for a guitar player and I was looking for a band. So like, we sat down the first time we ever never met each other before, and we played like thirty songs, like we rehearsed them. Covers, yeah. Like covers, wow. just it's just like natural, perfect chemistry. And I was like, wow, we got to do something. Mm -hmm. And I remember correctly, within one week, we played a show at uh, Gillespie's right here on Gunner Road. Yeah, wow, within one week. One week, we got a drummer that used to play with us. There was a drummer from Danny, uh, Danny. You remember Danny Wilshire? Oh, okay, Danny Wilshire. He played with me and Jeff, but I wasn't with that band anymore, but the drummer Danny was looking for a project. So we pulled him in, and he jumped right in, and we played a show with him the first, that first Saturday after, yeah, right. after rehearsal. We got our songs down, and we played a show. Wow. And we've been together that's ever it. since, really. That. Different that's people it. now, but, sure. you know, that's how we started out. And and how, how did Dom come into mi the mix? How did you meet well, Dom? Well, Dom was actually our third drummer. We had Danny, and then we had this other guy called, his name is Abbott, Abbott Finkel, I think. Finkel. He was more of a jazz drummer, but he played like heavy stuff. He could do Metallica and Slayer, but not not like Dom. Sure. He could like go through the motions, but more of a jazzy style. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And this is how we met, was Dominic was with On Edge, and him and Jeff, actually the same guitar player, Jeff, joined On Edge. I see. So we all kind of knew each other. And uh, I think Dom was in a car accident. That's correct. And you gave us the show. That's right. The Crazy we, Horse in the, the New Rochelle. The Crazy Horse in oh, New Rochelle. Okay, okay, okay. And what happened was Jeff let me use his equip, his amps because I didn't have a cabinet at the time. So I used his four Marshall stacks with my Galen Kruger head, and we played that show. And Dom was at the show, and so was Jeff. Crazy Horse. And we and Dom, I, I could see Dom looking at the drummer. He was like he was doing the Slayer song. And Dom's like, no, no, he's doing it wrong. I can see he's doing it wrong. So one day, Dom came over to our rehearsal place on 208 Street here. He's like, can I just try one thing? And he jumped behind the kit. 
and we did a Slayer song, and <coughs> Cliff and I just sat back and looked at each it. other, and that was it. We just, as soon as we looked at each other, like, he's in. We, we got to have him. Wow. And like the next day, we were like. And the light came back on. And it, <laughs> <laughs> it, was one, it was one of those, you know? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, all right, so, you know, we might start, come back and, um, you know, there might be a few follow up questions for you, sure. John, but let's, let's go ahead. Uh, Cliff, why don't you say a little bit about your family history and oh. background? Yes, um, I'm actually originally from. Uh, what the, um, Washington Heights area. Okay. We used to live there. When we were four years old, we moved to uh, where was it? Um, uh, Webster Avenue, and like by the Grand Concourse there oh, for sure, a little sure, while. Sure. But then for like about a year. But then when I was like six years old, I moved to 183rd Street and University Avenue, and went to uh, IS 206B. You know all those schools that are over down. You know down in that area. My twin brother Glenn, I have an identical twin brother. He's actually no longer with us. He passed away, you know. But we had to. We 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 endured a lot, if you can imagine. You know, back then, you know, trying to navigate the city streets back then. Uh, we were lucky. Like back in uh, 1985, we were offered to go move out to California for, with our cousins, and we. That was like obviously my life has changed. Over the, you know, moving out there, we. It was a really good experience. We had good high school, Nordoff High School, um, in Ohio, California. Oh wow! And uh, Ojai was such a beautiful town. I miss it so much. I want to go visit it, you know, if I could, you know, sooner or later, you know. But uh, then after we moved back from we moved back to uh, New York from California, that's when yeah we, we had the apartment on 208 A Street and uh, what is it uh, Jerome Avenue between Jerome was and and D Cal yeah. 208, and uh, we had a, we got an apartment there. My sister got it, and then my twin brother Glenn and I moved in there. We bought a whole bunch of equipment we shipped out from California over to there because we had, we had a good deal. We knew somebody uh, out in California uh, who hooked us up. And uh, so we UPSed all the speaker cabinets and everything. <laughs> all out. So my sister came one day and she saw like music equipment in, in boxes. What's all this stuff here? And the music equipment. She goes, okay, I guess. So we set up a room there and we, we used to play and rehearse there all the time. And uh, we just... It's about the size so of this fun, room. Yeah. Yeah, wow. it's about it wasn't that big, but <laughs> I, I, I know we probably you know pissed off a lot of neighbors you know, <laughs> I, you know at the time. But then again, a couple of times I remember uh, cops would come and one guy I, I forgot his name, Sergeant O'Malley or whatever, okay, and he said, um, "You guys got to stop." He goes, well, just "Do that one song." He wanted to hear more. <laughs> he wanted to hear like, you guys to hear one more just song. Just I said, "Okay," and it was like after ten, you know, so there's like a curfew or whatever after ten. So uh, you know. We Actually, we wrote a song that. about we that. We put lot, we yeah. put him in the, one of the songs, I think. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Johnny's Johnny Jib. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's funny. Uh, how old were you when you moved to California? Um, yeah, I was uh, fifteen. Okay. Or, or fourteen. I'm sorry, fourteen when I moved to California, and and, and I was uh, eighteen when I moved back to New York. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so so yeah, I there stayed. Four I was years. there for about yeah. I see. Um, do you want to share more about? Um, you know your experiences, uh, like up to fourteen. Like, what are things that yeah. you did for fun around the neighborhood? Well, or my in sister. Your apartment? Yeah, I got you. Um, she used to take us down to the uh, to New York City to like a trash and boardville. I think it was like a place okay. down there. Or we, uh, my twin brother. It was a guy out there with like a punk rock suit on, and we just looked at him and said, "We want to do something like that," you know. And so, like down in Alphabet City, we used to hang out down there uh -huh. all the time. Uh, caught a couple of hard show, hardcore shows right before I left. Oh, okay, uh, wow. And, and uh, Nuclear Assault, I don't know if you heard of Nuclear Assault. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I yeah. saw them right before I left out to California, who were growing up before that. Oh, wow. But that got, that, and then obviously listening to Metallica and Slayer got me into really heavy, you know, so, um, it just tickled my funny bone a little bit, but the heavier stuff, you know. So you were into heavy music before you moved to California already? Before huh? I moved to, actually, um, to be honest, uh, the Beatles, my sister played a Beatle record for us. Uh -huh. And we used to listen to the Beatles all the time. We really got into the Beatles. As far as, and that's when my, my brother had, I think he had a mop and I had a broom. And we used to pretend that we were in the band listening to the Beatles and singing uh -huh. and stuff like that. It was so much fun, you know? Wow. Uh, back then, but I think the Beatles are definitely a big influence. Not as far as the heaviness, you know, 
Sure. But you know what I mean, like the musical, it's I, I got a little musical stuff from them, you know? Absolutely. So the Beatles, but then uh, I went out with this girl, Yannette, she worked at uh, ICM, like International Creative Management, years ago. And she was like a talent scout. We used to go to every concert. We went to so many concerts. Oh, yeah. yeah. I forgot which one. I mean, Guns N' Roses, Guns N Extreme. Yeah, you know, so we recorded a lot of concerts. But Judas Priest, Ari Maiden, all of that. ACDC. You know, uh -huh. you know, like, this was back in the early 90s. Yeah, after I uh, got back from California. So, uh, take us from, like, the Beatles to, like, Slayer and all. What what was, like, the, the gateway into yeah, heaviness I, for I you? I guess it was, yeah, on 18 3rd Street, before we moved to California, I got somehow got a hold of an Ari Maiden poster and I put uh, that in my room. Uh -huh. And I looked, I liked the picture and all the, you know, the graphic details that they draw and all this. Stuff. And I was just drawn to that for some reason. I, and then I got the first Ari Maiden album uh, and I was like blown away. I was like, holy crap. And ever since then, I mean, I did listen to Poison. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, sure, <laughs> you sure, know, sure. We all sure. kind of did. We had no choice. It was not me. Poison, who's that? Sorry. <laughs> well, Dokken, you know, I'm saying that was around. That's what we That's right. Dokken was all right when, I, when they first came out. I heard them before they even got big. Yeah. I heard a demo tape of them. But after, like, was that? Yeah, after <laughs> Iron Maid, Iron Maid was the band that really got me. That's yeah. funny. That's a co definitely a common answer. And it's funny, too, because it's usually like, you know, someone saw a poster or an album cover yeah. before they even heard it. And like, wow, that's so cool. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, that's a, that's definitely a common answer. Would you... Um, before you went to California, like, did you start like collecting very many albums or things like that? Um, I collected uh, obviously Beatle albums, Peter Frampton, but then uh, the heavier stuff that we got into was uh, Iron Maiden. I remember my fir the first Iron Maiden uh, Killers album. Yeah, right sure. Now. And I put that on my wall. Actually, it was a record, it, it, so we used to play that. Um, I don't know, just so many. Uh, my twin brother actually liked uh, he was he liked metal too, but he mo he liked like Stevie Ray Vaughan type sure. of stuff more. He was really into blues, right? Blues, and I was most mostly I did jazz in high school. I played uh, the stand stand up bass in in uh, jazz band in uh -huh. Northern High, so that was fun. That was a good you know path to to what we were doing. There. I always wanted to be in a band, like that's all I did. Every time I rode my bike like twenty miles to school every day, I was like, I know something's gonna happen with music. I'll do something with music, you know. And, Wow. You know, uh, we're still here uh, after all these years. We're in our 50s, you know. That's right. <laughs> and um, uh, so much has happened since then. It'll come back to me, you know. Absolutely. Did you, um, bef before you played stand up bass in high school, did you play bass before that? Yeah, my grandmother actually bought me a bass at, I think, Bronin's Music. Oh, Bronin's, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. It, it was a, a Montoya. Uh, sunburst, and I just liked the way it looked and felt and everything. I got it. You can imagine me, you know, walking down up Fordham Road to 183rd Street in, in the you know early 80s. Wow, but with no case or anything. You know? so, <laughs> so it was kind of like you know I got a little Snickers and everything. But no, that was my first base. I brought that to California with me, and I don't know what happened to it. To be honest, I forgot what happened to it out there. But that's that's what got me into playing bass. Was my grandmother bought wow. me a bass guitar, Bronin's, yeah. It did, it did did your twin start playing instruments around he the did, same time? He did the same time. He got a guitar. Yeah. Uh, okay. What was his first guitar? Uh, I think he had Melody Maker or Harmony or something like that. It was like, but he he wanted to play guitar like John Lennon, and I guess I I kind of like Paul McCartney, you know. So sure, sure. I know, I, that's that's what gave us the foundation, I guess, to want to play, you know, music in general. But then we wanted to add the heavy stuff in though too, because that's what you know it got us going. That's right. Were um, did did you and your twin play with anyone else before you moved to California? Uh, no, we weren't any bands. We just jammed. We did a lot of jams. Like they had ragers, they call them keggers or whatever. Sure, and sure. We would go and play just the covers, you know. Yeah, sure. So we did. We did one of playing. We played a few shows back then. We played at the Quad in in our high school. When the, the name of the band was uh, what was it again? I forgot. Cover up. A cover up, yeah, that's the one. Cover up, okay. Yeah, and we used to play like Xenon. Uh, it was Xenon West, does a Ventura Boulevard, in California. Like we played places like that. I see. Um, it was fun. We did all covers. It was, it was called Cover Up. My twin brother Glenn, my my brother Bill Tabbert. He's like a brother to me. He lives out in California, but you know, uh, he sang and, and played keyboards. And then 
uh, another kind of brother, Brian Colbertson, played drums. Okay, and, okay. Uh, he's, he was a pretty good drummer back then, but then everything, after we left, go to California, you know, everything kind of like split up. Sure, but that was your first band, Cover Up? Yeah, Cover Up. Um, so again, before California, do you remember what 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 was the first show you went to? It did you you you, you go to yeah, shows? Yeah, I California? saw. It, I actually I saw the first show. Uh, it was Motley Crue at the Troubadour. Ah, and okay. I forgot what year it was. It was like eighty seven or eighty six or something like that. But that's what. It, and then Doctor, I knew another band, Doctor No. They were like a hardcore band back then and everything. I, um, Mike, my, what was his name? Mike was the bass player. Mike. Uh, Mac Purdy, I think his name was, yeah. And we used to hang out and play, just, I don't think we played out anywhere, but, he, you know, we used to go to clubs and hang out, but we didn't really play out back in California, you know. Yeah. With, um, so, why don't you talk a little bit about um, what things were like, a little more about what things were like in California, uh, especially like, you know, were there other metalheads at the high school you went yeah, to? Yeah, that's and, the thing, there were. We would, we would be that crowd... Smoking in the bathroom. I never smoked, but you know, sure. you know, smoking in the bathroom. And I remember one guy I, when I was listening to uh, Testament. I was listening to Testament a lot back then too. They were good. so. Oh yeah, we were hanging out listening to Def Leppard. That's what I was hanging out and listening to Def Leppard. And one guy came up to us and said, uh, um, "He goes, you guys should listen to heavier stuff." He goes, "What are you listening to this for?" You know. And he showed. That's when he showed us like Slayer and uh, Death. You know, uh -huh. and, and then introduced me. And ever, ever since then, too, I was like, oh, okay, I get it. You know, you know, you could definitely feel the, I could feel it more with the heavier stuff. You know, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, so when when you were with um, Cover Up, did you all do covers of some of the heavier bands uh, too, or were you focused on like more popular kind of? No, that at that time just more popular stuff. Yeah. Like we did like the outfield, you know, stuff like that, you know. Sure, sure. Uh, the Kinks. I think we did the Beatles a lot when people for per people's birthday, you know, Beatles. Song. Sure, sure, sure. Birthday song. Silent Steel was the band where you started. Oh yeah, metal. that's right. We that did the first band we started right. was Silent Steel right after Cover Up when we moved to uh, New York, moved back to the Bronx. We Come started. back to you now. That's, <laughs> that's what the <laughs> genre kind of switched Silent from Steel, that to yeah. like metalish, Metallica, Slayer, right? Yeah. When that band, and Little Maiden, I think, if I remember correctly, yeah. from Sabbath. Yeah. Silent Steel was that was like the first band we started. That's when, then when Dom came in, we we called it Nervous Rep. Remember because Nervous Rep. Yeah. Oh. But Dom, okay. Was, he was dating my sister, my little sister. That's how I met him through, and he was in a music scene. He knew Drift Marlos, uh, homie. We called him too, right? Like a yeah, few, yeah. few few friends. We were friends. Uh, Ace too. Uh, Donnie Stockow. He was a pretty good guy. He used to play bass with you guys. Right? He played bass also. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I see. And then, what about? Um, do you have the same kind of memories of, of meeting John that John already spoke about? Oh well, yeah. Well, I, I I think I remember meeting John the first time. His brother Mike introduced us. He goes, "You got to hang out with my tw my brother." He said, it's not his twin, but his brother. Uh, he plays guitar and he's really good. And so we set it up. He came over one day. We jammed and we we knew like thirty covers, just like. You know, from playing them or whatever, and it sounded like we rehearsed. It sounded them. like yes, yeah, like and we did. We just got together and it was like, wow, like, on two A Street, and then we just yeah, we had a show like a Good. week later, right at Gillespie, Gillespie. Yeah. <laughs> up on Gun Hill Road. That was fun too. I think uh, we used to call him Talking Head. Knocked over my amp, remember the amp that got messed up? My <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it was a fun night. Were, were there were there many metal shows at Gillespie's? Do you remember? Uh, no, not really. We were like the only only one, only band a couple they there. Had. And then uh, where did we go from Milltown there? Milltown Lounge. Milltown Lounge. Milltown Lounge. <laughs> <laughs> we were like the house band every weekend. We played oh, there for yeah. like across from French Charlie's down there. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, a high yeah, school yeah, yeah. now, I believe. And now it's a part of high uh, school. Uh, it used uh, to be a corner, like bar right on the corner. We played there for like every weekend. Wow. Um, like months on end, I remember. Were, were there other... Um, other like bands from the area that played there with you all that you remember? No, we were the only band. I think we did like three sets. Wow. A rock and roll set, then a metal right. set, then an original set. Remember? Oh, okay. That's, that's how we how we started, and then we built up from there. Then branched out, went up to Westchester, started yeah. playing like the rock room, the Crazy Horse, you know, mm -hmm. different uh -huh. different clubs up there. There was a couple of them. I forget. Well, lowdown too. Lowdown. Low down. We played sure lowdown every day yeah. too. We were up there a lot. But that's yeah. how. I met Dom, and then after we heard him play, like 
you know, Dave Lombardo on the double bass. Uh, we were like, oh, we were, that was awesome. Yeah, that's, that's when we kind of started and started playing out with just us four. Uh huh. You know, I see. My brother Glenn played that's guitar good. too, and guitar. And, yeah. Wow. Um, all right, so Dom, why don't you talk uh, about your family history and background some? How your family? I'm, bo ended up I'm born and raised in the Bronx, Williamsburg area, Allerton Avenue, Colden Avenue, especially right, Cliff Colden. Uh -huh, Colden uh -huh. yeah. And um, went to Lehman High School. Graduated from Lehman High School. Loved the Bronx. Um, I now live upstate, but I actually come down to the Bronx just about every day because most of my jobs are down in the Bronx, so I'm pretty much down here most of the time. And uh, I love the Bronx. I mean, uh, when people tell me, how was your upbringing? I said, I would never trade it for the world. The for Bronx sure. was top notch. For sure. And uh, even now, I come down here and I look and I got so many great memories now with these guys, you know, my family. And it's just, it's a great place to be. It really is. And especially when you look back and you say, wow, look at that. I wouldn't trade that for nothing. I mean, the way the Bronx is now, still nice, but my upbringing, nobody locked their doors. You could walk around. There's never an issue. I mean, you could park your car any place, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. There wasn't that many cars on the road. It was a great time, really. And the Bronx was, was a great, great place to be. Yeah. You know? in, in the neighborhood you grew up in, did you have, was it like just your immediate family or did you have like, you know, grandparents nearby? I had my, things like that? I had my grandparents down on the first floor and uh, we lived on the fifth floor and I had my uncle and my aunt lived on Mace Avenue, which is approximately a mile and a half away. Uh -huh, uh -huh. We used to go to Ask the Bowling all the time. It was another great place in the Bronx. Uh -huh. That's not there anymore. Um, I remember it used to be a place called Louie and Rocky for pizza on Allerton Avenue, and it was oh, buy yeah, one yeah. slice, get one yeah. slice, half price with a big chocolate shake. Oh, <laughs> Those were great days. And we used to have money. We had a quarter left over. We used to play Missile Command. Uh -huh. Or it could be Asteroids. It was yeah, Space Invaders. And it was a lot cage. of fun back then. Wow. It really was. It was. Wow. Um, what, what are things you remember doing for fun? Well, you mentioned one already, you know, going to the pizzeria and playing the arcades, but what are other things you do for fun around I, the neighborhood? I played baseball for Ask the Little League, and I was in the All-Stars at Ask the Little League. Um, I also, then I played a little bit for Pelham, Pelham Parkway Little League. I didn't do too well over there because it's like a click. I mean, it was still the Bronx, but it wasn't the same. And then I eventually went to Throg's Neck. I played in the Throg's Neck Little League. So baseball was a big part. I loved baseball. Sure. I was a pitcher. I played, I, for my age and for my, you know, for my size, I, I threw pretty hard. Um, and then if I didn't pitch, I would play center field or I play left field. Uh -huh. And let me tell you, it was a lot of fun. We used to play yeah. stickball. We used to take and everything. We used to go get the Spalding balls. Remember the Spalding, oh, yeah, John? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We used to get the, our mother's broom handles and unscrew them. Yeah, right. We used to go and we used to play stickball. Put some tape on it. Put tape on it. We used to play. <laughs> Those are the great times of the Bronx. You can't beat that. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Absolutely. And I know there were, what, at least two movie theaters right there? The there was Allerton right? Movie Theater and there was um, the Interborough in Frog's Neck. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And I remember when Jaws oh, yeah. came out. Jaws came out in 19, I believe it was 75. Yeah. And, um,. There was a um, there was a restaurant right next door which was called Louis. Okay, it was for seafood. And in the restaurant, in the movie theater, when Jaws was was out, there was a big jar, and it said basically, "Can you name the ten sharks in the jar?" And I named all ten sharks, and I remember my family won a free dinner to Louis restaurant next door. Oh, <laughs> I never forget that. That was in the Interboro. Wow, uh, wow. Um, so what what uh, elementary school did you go to? I went to, uh, first I went to uh, PS89, uh -huh. and then I went to St. Lucie's uh, Catholic School. Oh, sure, sure, sure. That, that, that's, the, and is that? The Grotto. Is that the Grotto, grotto right? Yes. The Grotto Church, right? Yes. Wow, wow. And what, what was that like for you? Uh, I didn't do too well. I did well. I mean, I survived it, but I mean, yeah, honestly, survived. I mean, you got to wear your hair a certain, you know, length. You got to wear right. this. You gotta, I'm not for that. I mean, I don't mind doing what I'm supposed to do, but don't tell me how I got to look and hair and stuff. It, it was just, the same it thing at Cardinal Hayes. They made you cut it was tough, cold you know? shoulder length, right? Uh -huh. Or no, collar length. Yeah. And you went past the collar, you had a cut. I mean, when there were functions <laughs> and stuff, I would have my, my jean jacket on. I would have the back, which would be uh, Iron Maiden, and they'd look at me like I was crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd have the purgatory shirt on when Iron Maiden, or Power Slave, and they would look at me like I'm crazy. Yeah. But that was me. But I did my work, and I did really well in school. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And so you, you were at St. Lucie's until like through eighth grade, is that eighth right? Eighth grade, yes. Um, and uh, were you zoned for Lehman or were you zoned for Columbus? Well, my, da Lehman? my dad, I was actually zoned for Columbus, but my dad lived on Throgmorton in, uh, 
in uh, college uh, uh, country club oh, country and club, I right. use my dad's address and I live with my dad and I sometimes I live with my mom sure, and yeah. uh, I went to Lehman I gotta tell you I loved Lehman Lehman was a great school Mr. Leader Robert Leader was the principal yeah, we right. had a great family and it was a great time uh -huh. and uh, a lot of bands there I can name a Cruciform came out of there I met Frank Gloria I met Lou Cortez over there and the funny thing is Lou Cortez I met him he's a, he's two years older than I than I am and uh, he used to work at um, I can't remember the name of the bowling alley right on Crosby Avenue, right right under the L. I can't remember the name of the bowling alley, but I met Lou. Lou, was, Lou used to run the bowling alley, uh -huh. and uh, we used to we used to go there and hang out with him. And next thing you know, he said, "Dom, I sing." Really? I said, "I play the drums, and my guitarist Frank, you know, he plays the guitar." I said, "So let's get together," and we started Cruciform, and it was a great time. It really was. Uh huh. So you were in high school when Cruciform started? Yes. Okay. Okay. So. So uh, why don't you share a little bit about, you know, you were already into Iron Maiden in, in uh, you know, at St. Lucie's. How'd you get into heavier music? I gotta be honest with you, once I heard Haunting the Chapel by Slayer and I heard the drumming on that, that was it. I mean, I said, this is somebody that's just, again, I like baseball. So I liked endurance, I liked speed. So if you go back to the New York Yankees, Back in 1977, 1978, those were the players. You had Chris Chambliss on first, you had Craig Nettles, you had Willie Randolph, you had Bucky Dent, you had, I mean, you had all the good players. You had Sparky Lyle, Ed Figueroa, Louis Tiant. See, I know my Yankees. I don't know the new guys, I know the old guys. I mean, you had, you had Lou Pinelli, you had Reggie Jackson. I mean, you had all the good players. You had Thurman Munson as the catcher. I mean, we're talking about those guys were, and they didn't make a lot of money. But bottom line is, I always liked the fast pitchers. Gidju was a great pitcher, but Rich Gossage was my favorite goose. Because he would come in at the end of the game and play two, he'd probably throw two or three pitches and strike them out and bring them into the World action. Series. Yeah. yeah. So I always liked speed and endurance. And you know what? Dave Lombardo from Slay, when I heard that play and I was like, I couldn't believe the playing. The speed and the endurance, yes, I like Iron Maiden. Clyde Bow was a great player. Nico McBrain was another great player. But Lombardo just had, for some reason, and he's Latin also, uh -huh. he's Italian and he's Cuban. I'm Italian, so I mean, I got that, you know, Latin. And I just like the endurance, the speed, and I just like his ability, the way he plays. Just amazing. And to this day, he's just an amazing player. Absolutely. But um, basically, I got into the heavy stuff, and everybody else got into other stuff, like, you know, like Possessed and stuff, like, you know, the death metal. I wasn't into that. Slay was pretty much the hardest I really got into. But then I like bands like Merciful Fate, uh -huh. which they were. He was a, Krim Ruz was a phenomenal drummer. Then you had... Um, uh, other bands, so you had, uh, I mean, it's just numerous bands, but I mean, you had Merciful Fate. I like Metallica. Metallica was good, but I mean, Metallica was more of a polished, I'm not more of a, I'm more of a raw type of sound. Yeah. I like yeah. a more raw sound. Um, there were a lot of different, Excited was another good band. Oh, yes. Violence and Force yes. was one of my first, I still have the vinyl. I like Venom a little bit for a couple of songs here and there yeah. because Lou liked them pretty much more and Frank did, but I was more like Exciter. Uh, more of things of that nature, but it was it was a great time. I never forget the uh, Lehman High School. We all used to hang out on the the um, the second floor. All the lockers were there, and who would come out with you know? Did you hear this CD? And you, not CD, excuse me. Did you hear this album? Look, I got this album. But I mean, it was good it time back music. then. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was wow. a good time back then. So so, how'd you get a hold of Haunting the Chapel? Do you remember? Somebody gave me a cassette and said, you you got to check this out. If you like Merciful Fate, you got to check this out. So I said, okay. So I remember it was, it was Haunting the Chapel was on one side of the uh -huh. cassette. The other side was Kill Em All, yep. Metallica. So I said, Phantom Lord was a great song. I said, but you know what? It's great, but this is better to me anyway. Yeah. And then when I heard Chemical Warfare, and I, I mean, it's just that the, the, the riffs and stuff is just, I mean, even the drum part... I mean, it's just, it's just unbelievable. It really is. It's just, uh, there's nothing like it. Even till that, even till this day, my son, I have a son and he's playing on our, on our new EP we created and he's 21 and he said, dad, that's just, that sound is just unbelievable. And uh, even today, he likes stuff of today, but he says, dad, there's something about that music was magical back then. Absolutely. I said, Dom, it's because everything was put together with feeling. There were no drum machines. Those guys played. Yeah. They were, I mean... We play, you know what I mean? There's, there's no machines, there's no punch-ins. We played, and we played our heart and soul out. Absolutely. So how did you, like, get into drums? Were, to be were honest, uh, to be honest, no. Actually, I was a kid. I said, you know what? I just, 
I wanted to play an instrument. My brother, I have a brother, Cliff, and uh, he played the guitar for a short period of time, and uh, he didn't do too well on it. Oh. And uh, then I pretty much got into the guitar a little bit, and I didn't get too much into it, but I wanted something more, like I was explaining to you earlier, speed, power, and endurance. And what is that? That's not the vocals. I said, that's the drums, that's the backbeat, that's the heart of a band. Uh -huh. And that's what I got into, pretty much, mostly. And that's how I got into it. Well, what was your first uh, kit? Do you remember? My first kit was, it was bought at, uh, I'll never forget it, I got it for my 15th birthday, and it was a um, drum craft, and it was from, it was Bronin's, I think, not Bronin's, it was a music center in Hartsdale. I don't oh, know what, it might have okay. been Bronin's, it was next to a food store called Turco's, Turco's. and it might have been, it might have been Bronin's. Been Bronin's. Guitar there. Bronin's. It might have been in Hartsdale, right? Yes. And it was drum craft, and let me tell you, I had a little trick to it, and I'll tell everybody the trick. What I did was, I wanted them to sound like Pearls or Yamaha. So what I did was, I, I experimented with one of my drums and I painted the inside of the shell. I took the top and the bottom skin off and I used Red Devil, i never forget it, Red Devil polyurethane, uh -huh. and I polyurethane the inside to give it more of a dead tone. And let me tell you, you guys like it, right? Punchy, yeah. yeah it sounded like great, it. it really did. And for all my recordings, I used all my own drums, always, uh -huh. except for the new one. Sure. And let me tell you, it was one of my staples. And uh, I basically polyurethane the drums, and I tuned my drums to B, A, G, D, so that when I played, I went in syncopation with, with all the players that I played with over the years. Wow. And so, what about your first uh, concert that you went to? Do you remember? The first concert I went to was Takashi in Long Island. Uh -huh. And uh, we, we won tickets. Me and my cousin Joe at the time won tickets and we went to see Takashi. It was a great show. Joe Rinaldi. No, no, Joey Casola. Uh -huh. And it was, uh, it was a great concert. But that, was, I would, that would be my first, I guess, I was 13, 12 or 13 at the time. Yeah, sure. But my first real concert was to see Iron Maiden at Radio City Music Hall. That was my uh, first concert. And I, that was my real first concert. And I was probably 14 at the time. And let me tell you, it was a great show. It might have been when Power Slave was coming out or was just come out, but it was a great concert. Who, who was on the bill? Do you remember? Oh boy, I don't remember. I'm sorry to say yeah, I don't remember. But it could have been, it could have been White Lion. Could have been the White Lion. Uh -huh. I'm not sure, but it could have been White Lion. But it was Radio City Music Hall. I see, I see. And do you remember, um, uh, since uh, uh, you know Slayer was such a pivotal ba band for you, what was the first time you saw them live? I saw them at Lamore. Matter of fact, um, I won tickets on WRTN. It was a radio station oh, yeah. back then. Uh, I can't remember exactly what year it was, but it was in the 90s, early 90s. Yeah. And I won tickets and I took my brother with me, Cliff, and he's not into heavy stuff. And he came, he because he drove, he's older than I am. He took me to the concert in Lamore. And uh, I was, when I saw them, it was just live, it was just unbelievable. And I actually still have the bootleg that I bought from Bleeka Bob's. Uh -huh. Bleeka Bob's? <laughs> Bleeka Bob's. Yeah. I mean, they're not around anymore, but no, Bleeka Bob's. No, no. And um, I still listen to it to this day, and I remember being at that show. Wow. Wow. Um, so why don't you talk a little bit about Cruciform? Uh, um, that was that was that your first band? Cruciform was the first. Well, actually, it was the second band. I was in a band when I first got my drums. It was a band called Onyx. They were on um, Paulding Avenue on the Morris Park side of the Bronx. Okay, sure. And uh, I played drums for them. And it was a kid named Ronnie. I don't remember his last name. I'm sorry. It was Ronnie, and I think it was Dave. I'm not sure if it was Dave or Dan. I'm not sure. But it was like I did um, church. Um, I did church type of, uh, um, what do you call them? Uh, Pipe organs? No, no, no. In other words, it was like uh, meetings, church meetings, oh. and oh. I was the band, I was the drummer. They did, he played guitar, the other guy, Dan or Dave, I can't remember his name, he, he played the bass and he sang, and we did like church meetings, like Bible study, that's uh -huh. what it was called. Uh -huh. And I played the drums and we played, I played a lot of Bible stuff. Um, the band was called Onyx, and uh, I did, we did, the heaviest we did was, um, um, Devo and stuff like that and the cars and things like that. Sure. So that produced my love for a lot of popular music and top 40. And when I got together with these guys, we, we played a lot of covers too. We still play a lot of covers. For sure. yeah. for sure. But I mean, that's pretty much, you know, what I when I pretty much started playing the drums. And then my first band was Cruciform from high school. We got together, we put, we put the band together and me and Frank pretty much, uh, we recorded Lou. 
and then we could not find a singer for a while, so Lou sang for a little bit, and then we found John Eberins, who, who was pretty much a great fit. We were a great fit, and we did really, really well, and we played around. We played the whole circuit at the time. There was um, Lemoise we played. We played um, Sundance. We played Februarys. That was another club. We played um, we played the whole Long Island Strip. There was a, at the time there was a lot of clubs to play in right. Freehold, Long Island. There was a lot of clubs to uh -huh. play. Uh, we also played the Limelight. That was a great place yes. to play. We played with Room Helder many many years oh, ago. Wow. That was a great show we played down there, and um, those are good times. And um, we did a recording at Monkey Hill, Monkey Hill Studios in College Point, Queens. We did a really great recording. And then, you know, it, uh, it fell apart after a while because, uh, you know, it doesn't, if, if the chemistry doesn't go and, it, and the four guys don't really meld together, like I, I love these guys, they're like brothers of mine, we meld together. We got our disagreements, but we meld together. I mean, musically, yeah. we're a chemistry. Yeah, but with, with, chemistry. with Lou, Cliff, and John, it was, it was like the chemistry wasn't really there. Uh -huh. It was there for a short time. And then we got signed to a small record label called Wicked Records, which was owned by New Renaissance Records. The lady's name was Ann Bolin, and she paid for Hellion. She was the singer for Hellion. Uh -huh. And she printed only like a handful of copies, and I could never get my hand on it because it never really came out. But we had one of our songs on air called Resistance. Uh -huh. And she bought the rights to the song, and it was, if you remember, I told you guys, yeah, yeah. it was on a metal, like a metal mayhem massacre, like a, like a, a, compilation, a compilation by Wicked Records. Uh -huh. And it was really, uh, it was a good song. But then after that, it pretty much fell apart. Frank, he pretty much joined the Navy. He moved to California. And John pretty much, you know, we split with John. I split with uh, Lou, did his own thing. He was in a couple of bands called, yeah. I think it was Black, Black Hawk, was one of his bands and then me and John got together and we got together believe it or not with Jeff and Jeff was a friend of John's I never knew that at the time I never knew these guys at that time oh, Jeff was in my band from high school right but I didn't know I didn't know you right. guys were Jeff at that time so right. John Everins brought Jeff around and we formed on edge and on edge we did pretty good we did a small we did a small uh, tour not a tour but we did like four or five shows but the chemistry wasn't there either. It just wasn't there. Yeah, yeah. It just, if you don't have the right chemistry with the right guys, it's not gonna work. And then, lo and behold, I met these guys, because they actually called me, because I was in a car accident, and I basically said, you know, my band on edge can't play. Do you guys wanna play? Because matter of fact, Jeff said, I have a guy that can play. I didn't wanna lose the spot. I didn't wanna not show up for the crazy horse and for, for the promoter. So I said, you know what, Jeff, do you know somebody? He goes, we got, I have a friend of mine that plays guitar and he'll play in his band, Silent Steel. I yep. never forget it. Yes. So basically, I said, you know, let these guys take the bill. And we came over and we rooted them on. And then, next thing you know, I became good friends with them. And it did, you know, the rest is history with these guys, yeah. you know? Wow. So, I, how would you um, describe like the sound of On Edge uh, compared to Cruciform? Was it a similar sound? Cruciform was a more like a Judas Priest type of sound. And uh, Lou was more into like more of like a creator type of feel. Yeah. And I was more into the Slayer feel, and Frank was pretty much more, he was pretty much the main writer of the songs. And um, he wrote, I would say, 90% of the songs. So he was more of a Judas Priest. He loved K.K. Downing, you know, uh -huh. which is, which is, and Glenn Tipton, which is, uh, those are great players. But I mean, that's not what I wanted to play. I was sure. more into the Black Sabbath. He was more into like the Led Zeppelin type, uh -huh. which was fine. But I mean, that's why I'm saying chemistry's got to be together. Yep. And again, Lou liked Black Sabbath, loved Black Sabbath. I like Black Sabbath. John at the time liked more like heavier stuff, like he liked um, death and stuff like that, but I'm not into that stuff. And I like, I appreciate it, but I'm, that's not what I want to play. Sure. Um, Frank wanted to pretty much stick with the Judas Priest era, you know, Iron Maiden, which was great, but I mean, but I wanted to do more, a little more of a heavier stuff. Sure. But I mean, we, uh, we did pretty well together. Um, but other than that, like I said, you know, that was pretty much how we came together with that. Where did Ace play again? Ace. Ace played with On Edge and on he edge. was the bass yeah, player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Darn good bass player, really good bass player, good yeah, guy. Yeah. And uh, he still plays till this day and he plays now guitar, right? He, yeah, he lives in the Bronx now. too, Ace. Uh, He's also in the Bronx on okay. Layton uh -huh, Avenue. Uh, uh -huh. Ellsworth Avenue he lives. Ellsworth, think okay. Name. And so you mentioned Broomheld already. I know at yes. least a couple oh, yeah. of those guys are from back. the Bronx. Yeah. Great guys. From we played with Broomheld there, yeah. What are some other like Bands in the area that you remember at the time, or that you played in with. high school, we played with Deadly Deadly Blessing. That was uh, Nikki, Eddie, John, and uh, what was the other guy? Bird. 
And then it was um, Metal Storm, my friend Ray. There was Frank Pisano, uh, Ray Steenberg, Frank Pisano. Uh, Kim was the singer. And then I forgot who played on bass. I think it was Mike Russo, played the guitar also for them. Um, I can't, there's so many, there were so many bands. I mean, there would, I mean, I don't know, your high school, John, but there were, you went to Catholic, you went to Catholic yeah, High School, it was the many. Amazing, yeah. Mine, there were so many bands, I can't even remember. It was just, we did a battle of the bands in uh, 1988. Wow. It was uh, Cruciform, it was, oh God, it was um, Metal Storm, which was Ray and Frank Pisano and Kim, um, and we did the battle of the bands, we won the battle of the bands. Uh -huh. And I remember there was four or five bands that were there and they were very, very good. Everybody was very, very, you know, it was the first time we won and we won the battle of the bands. Wow. It was a good, it was a good show. Wow, and do you remember, um, you know, other than Lehman Battle of the Bands, any other places that you, could you go to any other places in the Bronx to hear heavy music at the time? There was the Red Eagle Saloon, which is in Bronx Neck, uh -huh. and that was the yeah, yeah. big place everybody played. Um, that was pretty much, and we used to all pack the place, and it wasn't that the fact that the band would bring all the people, it was a hangout back then. Uh -huh. People would just go out, the girls, the guys, and it wasn't even about, you know, drinking, it was just, everybody got together, everybody was a union back then. Now everybody's segregated, everybody's separate. People would just go yeah. and support their friends, and just, you know what, I got nothing to do, let's go and just hang out and see what these guys are doing. And just, everybody was a family back then. It was, yeah. it was, it was more union, and I would say more camaraderie, don't you think yeah, so, John? Yeah, like an army. It wasn't like, like, you know, I mean. Army with long hair. Right? Yeah, <laughs> but it was, it was like, basically, if you went to Radio Saloon, and let's say your, your friend's band was playing first, or he was playing last, Everybody stayed till the end to watch all the bands. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Now it's like, yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. you want it to be the last band on the bill because you know what? It would be like everybody coming later. Now people come there earlier and they want to get in and get out. That's right. And they want to go drinking somewhere. Uh -huh. It's different now. But you know what? We try when we play, even when we play now, we try to stay till the end to support, you know, all the bands we, su we support, we play with yeah. because you know what? They're there working hard like we are, you know, and if we could bring 10, 20, 30 people there and they could bring 10, 20, 30 people and we all hang out, we got a nice crowd there. Yeah. But a lot of people don't do that today, but we're trying to bring that back. Absolutely. Absolutely. Was that spot, was that on uh, Tremont? That was on Tremont Avenue. Yeah, yep, so right across the street was a topless place called Ruffles. <laughs> <laughs> right across the street it was, yeah. Oh. As a matter of fact, now it's called the Wicked Wolf. Oh, and okay, yep. That's and it's thought, one yeah. of my clients, John Benai, he's a good friend yeah. of mine. I went to school with him, and he's one of my clients, and he's a great guy. And if you want some good food there, go there, because the food is top-notch there. Absolutely. And it's good people there, it really is. The bar is nice, they're good people there. Absolutely. Service is second to none. Do you remember, I think, this one um, bronze band I'm trying to find out more about played at that venue, this band called The Unjust. Yes. Does that ring a bell? Yes, The Unjust. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They did. Um, I think their one fooling's called Hammerhead. Something yes. Something like that. They started yes. out like, you know, more like first wave New York hardcore, but by the time they put out the album, it was like speed metal. That's and, correct. The Unjust. Yeah, wow, yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. long time ago. Yes. Um, but yeah, haven't been able to locate any of, I, I think a couple of them have passed, but I haven't been able to locate any See, these them. guys wouldn't know that area because they weren't from, they're from the Marshall right. Parkway area. That's right. And I didn't know them back then in this time, but I wish I would have known these guys because they would have played the Red Eagle Saloon too. It would have been great. You yeah, know, it would have been, yeah, would have yeah. been, a, you guys would have had some memories there, really. It was a great we, place we, to play. We caught up, yeah, we were, we didn't really coincide together, all of us, you know. That's right. Till, till towards uh, the end, you know, end of what metal was. <laughs> But we did well. We did well. We, we did. played a lot of good venues. Well, it's cool. Back then, they played a lot of metal on like MTV. You know. Uh huh. Actually, know, we were on MTV. And and we played the Abishor Club, and uh, on Yon Yonkers. Oh yeah, that's. We were and MTV, so. MTV filmed it. I think Budweiser was there. There was uh -huh. a bunch of bands. Uh, we played with. Is that band uh, with? Eddie, remember? Oh, Smokescreen. 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 Oh. They also, I think they went to Lehman too. Yeah. They? No, no, no. Uh, some of the members did. Some yeah, of some of them were going to Bronx. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we played that the whole show. When I remember when we went on, the light, it just started getting dark out. The lights came on, they put the smoke machine on. Great, great venue. We had a good time that night. Yeah. Wow. Just that like the big four when Slayer came on, it put the lights yeah. on. The lights went off and all the smoke. That's exactly that what was it was. Perfect. Wow. Yeah. Oh my God. We, all, we also opened for Motorhead at the Ritz, which was a yeah. good show also. Oh, yeah. wow. It was, it was, it was uh, Motorhead and I think it was... Um, Broomhilda. Was, no, it wasn't Broomhilda. Broomhilda was the other show, the GBH. We played GBH. GBH. Another oh, show at the okay. Ritz, yeah. John wasn't there though. He couldn't make Not that it. one. No, no. We had this guy, um, Mike Puma, play guitar for us at the time. He filled in. He filled yeah. in. Yeah. 
Wow. We played the Moors plenty of times. You know, we've been we've yeah. been around. We play a lot. The whole we played the kind of Chance up where we are. Chance, Gipsy. Chance oh, we played at least five times. After my good place. Past, though, we kind of took a hiatus, you know, for yeah. a while there. And sure. Then we started yeah. back up just recently. Like so. We're doing we, our thing now. Yeah. So keep but when, when Glenn had passed away, we did play like at least four or five benefit shows. We did, and yeah. we did yeah. raise money for the uh, for the Heart Association because he died of a heart attack. Okay. So we did play Lamore, uh, not more, excuse me, uh, Lowdown, and we Lowdown. raised a lot. Of, we raised a nice amount of money. We yeah, got a couple of bands together. Yep. Oh, yeah, One was yeah. Peace Revolve, I think we we had. Yeah, we were in a little and band we called also, Peace Revolve. And we also raised money, and I gave we gave that money to the American Heart Association for because oh, yeah. for, for, yep. Glenn died of a heart attack. I remember yes. that. Wow. I remember that. I think we played with Vampire at, at Vampire Vampire also. Or, yes. At wow. uh, what was that? The Marty Zelenis. Lowdown, which became the Rocker Room. Remember? Well, we played there, but we also played at Lowdown. Yeah, also, Lowdown. yeah, we played Lowdown for quite a few. Another good band from from yep. the nineties. Oh, yeah. There wow. was a band Throw Jam. You remember them? They played. There. I remember them. Yeah. Fine. Uh, there were a lot of good bands puppies, from uh, a lot of good bands from the Lowdown era. <laughs> well, so once uh, once Dom joined up with um, you all, do you remember the first show that you played all together? It was our first show. It was that. Uh, was it? Was it Gillespie's? It was over here. The Gillespie's, right? I think it was. Right? I played Gillespie's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, oh, Gillespie's. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think it was the heaviest yeah. thing. There were people were drinking and drunk, yeah, but they yeah, didn't even care. And then uh, the other place down there, the. I What's forgot No Town. No Town Lounge. No, yeah, but yeah. the first one we did, we did Glass Piece because I remember we had said to the owner, we said, listen, we're a heavy band, but we'll play covers. So I remember like, I said, let's, let's do it this way. Let's play the first set. I said, let's make it, you know, all covers. Everybody will drink and get drunk and everybody will be hanging out and then we right. can throw our stuff in at the end. And <laughs> exactly. we did. We and did. actually, we started, they started to dance. Who was that guy? Was that the older guy that was there? Oh, uh, Eric. Uh, Eric, yeah. Eric, he used to dance around because Talking he was drunk about, already. Yeah. So yeah, it was yeah. fun. Though. It was a lot of fun though. <laughs> yeah, but we used to always play the, the lighter stuff earlier, the cars, right. the kinks. Okay, and then we, so did, we, we instant yeah. a couple of Motorhead songs and we instant a couple yeah. of more in there uh -huh. at the end, uh -huh. which was yeah. fun. The heaviest stuff. That was fun. Wow. Um, and what are some other of the like early places that you all were playing at that time? The other place on that we the last minute the band canceled the one on uh, on Broadway. Remember over in Washington Heights there that little. Oh, bar? we went to we went to the Terminal Bar. We had a we had a show <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. booked at the Terminal, and we <laughs> yeah. we came on there Broadway. with a bunch of guys with leather jackets and, uh, yeah. and equipment. equipment. equipment no, all the equipment, and the guy took one look at us, <laughs> and he was like. No, no, you're not going to wreck our place. We're going to wreck the place. So the same night, our, we had a guy who was kind of a manager at the time. He made, he got on the phone. He got us a show the same night at a bar somewhere, Billy somewhere. The Billy's, I think. Down on yeah. Broad, uh, what was it, Broadway yeah, somewhere. Broadway. But anyway, he filled in and got us another slot. We played another show that same night. It was down the road from off Broadway. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. Wow. Oh, the yell, I think it was. So, so you all never played at uh, the, the terminal then, huh? No, no yeah, they, they, didn't they didn't want us to play. <laughs> they just one look at us, they're like, oh no. <laughs> so like, what? We're, we're playing yeah, regular songs. that other play. We, we did used to pack the place, though. You know, yeah, we had a lot Especially of Milltown Lounge. Yeah. Was, we oh, yeah. Right here in Lexington. Right? But again, like I was saying, it was a hangout back then. Now it's a little different today. You know? yeah. People yeah. just go if they said, oh, your band's playing, your friend's playing. Oh, we're going to, we'll just go. Everybody, it was a hangout. Now it's like, they go and and it, that's why they put on the fly to put bangles on at eight o'clock, eight thirty. They come for the eight o'clock and then everybody leaves. Yep. And next yep. thing you know, it's like you know these guys bought their they bought their equipment. Everybody's here, so we try to keep it together, you know, and give away some shirts, give away some stuff to keep people there. You know, right, John, to keep yeah. it to keep it going. Everybody will stay, you know, Absolutely. and keep it as long well, as we can, you know. Now everybody, nobody wants to go to any bars at night. You know, get a DWI, or you know, or even have money to it's buy a twelve dollar beer. You know, it's crazy. I know so, it is. You know, it's like, you know, to go to the band. Now, I mean, the big thing now, I can see like Facebook Live they have, where you know they you can actually pay ten twenty dollars to watch the band live just from your own living room. Right? Yeah. It's not the same though. You know, no, so no, like, no, you no, gotta have that thing. feeling of the band. You, you know, gotta feel it. But Absolutely. even when you go out and you're gonna be drinking, if you're gonna drink, you know, you just know your limit, you know, and people have to know their limit. I mean, that's what you're being, being an adult is all about. Yeah. You drink a beer or two and then you know what, you sober up and then you know, when yeah. you're time to go home, you know, that's it. And if people go. would stay till the end of the bands, they would be they sober, sober and go home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, there you go. Know. That's right. That's it. Um, so you put a big sign on there, drink as many beers as you want, but make sure you stay till the end so you can yeah. go home sober. There you go. <laughs> Did you all ever play at the train depot? I think maybe that. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's you the guys did with, uh, yeah. with 
Total A. Total Access. Total Access. Total John Delapi. Yes, I was in that there. band. I was, oh, I was doing my own yeah. project at the time. We did yeah. another cover. Covers. Band. I forgot about the Train Depot. That's right. Yeah. Train Depot. That's right. Yeah. Played that. I did. Played, played we played all covers and stuff. It was a lot of fun. We did uh, different covers. That we place up in Dudley's, I think it was. We played Dudley's Dudley. also. That's in Rochelle. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Played that place also. Mario Lenny's. What about the, the the Blackthorn, which was down the road here? Oh yeah. Did you all ever play there? We, I think we, that was yeah. maybe. We played, played there. We played when they went to Queens. Yeah. We played the uh -huh. Blackthorn. Blackthorn Fifty One. We probably played there about ten, probably ten times. We should have played. We weren't really doing Quite anything about that. That yeah. I think was when Glenn passed away. We were on hiatus. Yeah. That's what it was. I think this one here was maybe like late nineties, early two thousands. Yeah. When they were that's when Glenn course. passed. Yeah. yeah. I think that's when Glenn passed away. Wait, when did Glenn pass away? Oh, he passed, he passed away in 2000, uh, 2007, Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Seven? Oh yeah, that yeah. was seven. Yes. I see. Um, and so with uh, with Nervous Wreck um, during the the first part of the band's history, um, when did you record your first um, demo or recording? Legend. Was it Cherry Hill or Monkey Legend? No, the first one we did, Glenn Legend? had found somebody called Mark Nathan. Oh, yeah, yeah, Mark yeah, Nathan yeah. on uh, Sound City Studios. It was in somewhere in the city. You remember everything. And um, Glenn set us up, and we did it. It was like the middle of the night, I think. We had Elvis was playing with us, hanging out. I think he played. He was hanging out with us. Not Elvis I Presley. Know. He's gone by that time. He's the like Elvis Presley. I remember we did that but late at night. It was. Like, it was late at night. It was like yeah. three in the morning. Whatever. We yeah. kept playing. Yeah, the we did it. I fell asleep. I couldn't do the backing vocals. I passed out yes. on the couch. <laughs> I was working at Sam Ash Music at the time in Manhattan, Forty Eighth Street. Okay. Okay, sure. to be, you know? Absolutely. <laughs> That's how we got our equipment cheap yeah. from him well, and Glenn. I, uh, I'd get retail. Whatever, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and why don't you talk some about like uh, where Nervous Wreck was practicing, um, you know, the different places, whether, you know. Um, what's Richie's studio in, in Thrive? No, 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 he's talking about early. early. So we talked early. about we used to practice where you used to live. Right, well, right here, 208 Street. Street. That's right. Yeah, uh -huh. down the street. Yeah. Actually. And basically 208 Street, and it's on the new, on the new, um, Oh, oh yeah, the yeah, new EP. On the cover, what right? I basically did was we designed the cover. It's going to show all three buildings. We were all right. born and raised in the Bronx out of buildings. So you actually have my building over here. You have Cliff's building over here, and you have John's building over here. So we used to practice in Cliff's building on the first floor, right, Cliff? Well, yeah, in Two Hundred Eight Street in, in Jerome. It was a and big walk-in apartment and. Oh man, we kind of we took it over. I mean, you know, it's you know, at the time, we just forget it. We, we had, had a great time. There was a bar next door called uh, Kalala, uh, Kalala Bay. Kalala Bay. Kalala Bay. And, you know, we had hundreds of people there. It was packed. Like, and we used to hang out at the Parkway and watch the Parkway. Everybody would. I mean, like, there would be two pigs there in the Parkway and want to hang out. All with everybody in the Parkway. Wow. <laughs> That's right. And, and, and would, would you hear the, the, the yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Would you all bring out the big boom boxes and 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 blast oh, yeah. things on that? Oh yeah. Uh huh. And I know. And then we rented the studio, and then afterwards we had said, you know what, it's getting the cops can't keep coming here, it's yeah, getting too much. Yeah, because the cops came a few times. Oh, yeah. And oh, then, the being, queen, a, right? being artists that we are, you know, creative, sometimes 3 o'clock in the morning you'll have an idea. And when you have an idea, there's nobody to play it with. Yeah, sure. So I said, you know what, guys, let's rent a room. So we actually found a room, and we rented it in Queens. It was called Whitestone. It was called Multi Sound Multi -sound Studios. Studios. Okay. And we paid. We, we used to uh, pay rent every month for that. 24-hour studio. 24-hour studio. Wow. Yeah, we so we basically would go out to places and watch bands play, and we would play, and we would go places. And then I would say to these guys, you know, we used to pick up some girls sometimes. We did. And I would say, you know what, let's go back and jam in the studio, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. And we used to just go back there. We had the keys, and we used to play till four, five, six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah. And it was fun. And yeah, we, we wrote our best stuff at that time because that's what we used to do. Yeah. We used to play till you know, we can't play anymore. Yeah. And that was a lot of fun back then. Yeah, it was good to have a, a old rehearsal space. And, and now we pretty much play. He, John plays by himself, Cliff plays by himself, I play by myself, and then sure. we come together yeah. and we play at Richie's studio, uh, which is in uh, Bruce, Brewster. And, Brewster. and we play pretty much, and when we, when we put it together, it comes together like magic, and it really does. We also the play, chemistry. What, what was the other Richie in, on the, in, the, in the Bronx on East Chester Road? What oh, yes, that? Richie. Oh, that was um, East Coast Studios. East Coast? That East was Coast. Coast. Oh, and then right behind him was Traffic Light. Up here. Traffic, oh, light, yeah. traffic Light was, we used to, that was Cruciform days. I played, traffic I played, Light, yes. Played there, that was Rich light. Rob, I think. Rob was his Rob. name. Ready, uh, Rob? Ready, Rob? Yeah, Ready, Rob? That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did a couple recordings there. And who remembers even behind that was East Coast, the actual studio. Yeah. Richie, I don't think it was East Coast, but behind it was East Coast Studios. 
That's where I did Onyx recording. That was the only recording oh, wow. studio okay. back then. Oh, yeah. East okay. Coast Studios. Uh -huh. It was okay. right across the street. There's a McDonald's, there's a fire, there's a fire oh, uh, house right there, there right yeah. behind Remember it. Remember where 80 Taxi was? On, 80, on, where are you? Right above that, there used to be a, a rehearsal recording studio. Yes. And I played there with Joe Torre, me and my brother. Okay. When we were first getting started. There's so many places we played, man. Wow. Yeah, good times. So really good times. It's come back to me now. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, so, in again, in this early period, um, do you remember like shows that stick out to you all the most? I mean, you you you, you might have different answers, all of you, yeah. but like some of the more memorable shows from that early period. Oh, I remember all the Red Eagle Saloon shows with Lou and John and Frank, and it was just a lot of fun. All my friends, all our friends there, and it was just there was never any fights. Everybody got along. All right, so you listen to Def Leppard, great. You listen to Iron Maiden, who cares? You like ACDC, more power to you. But we all came together as a family. Everybody listened, everybody just supported everybody back then. Yeah. That's what we did back then. It was a different world. There was no social media, everything was word of mouth. You would trade tapes and see, you know, trade tapes and, and things with people, and that's how it was. Yeah. Cassettes, you know, yeah. that's how it was. Yeah. yeah. Different world back then. That Do you remember any, 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 um, uh, things that stuck out, you guys, with shows that we played? Well, I would say, uh, obviously, okay. Lemmy, like when I, I yes. we played the, that was a good ahead at the Ritz, we hung out, we smoked a joint with Lemmy. Uh-huh, uh, -huh. uh -huh. And it, was, it was pretty funny. What about know. Typo? Remember we hung oh, out with Typo? Oh, Typo, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, they thanked us on their album, Bloody Kisses, yeah. Yeah, we yeah, used to be guys. Fan of them. You know, had Peter Steele, great guy, you know, rest his soul. See them in the village, we used to hang out in the village. Alcatraz, remember Alcatraz? Alcatraz, uh-huh. Yeah, That's yeah. a good place too. Wow, yeah, a lot of good times. Good times. Yeah. yeah. I remember one thing. I remember John Zamp. Every once in a while, goes out. Oh, the amp. <laughs> right. You just gotta hit oh, it. That's <laughs> it. Bring it back up again. <laughs> well, it's because you used the groove tubes. That's why. The groove tubes, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think that was a Randall. Yeah. Right? The Randall. Yeah. I had a Randall. I had a. I had a bunch of amps. Oh yeah. But I think the best is the triple rectifier. Yeah. 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 Mess of Boogie. Mess of Boogie. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's got awesome sound. And how, I mean, obviously people can, um, you know, go back and listen themselves, um, but how would you describe your sound during that period and how has it evolved over the years as Nervous Wreck? Um, I would say you or... I would say John, because John, you're the guitar. I think so. the sound is pretty much the same, just more, more energy now. More, more umph because better equipment. Sure. You know, and uh, we've always been like kind of fast, speed metal, but, you know, not speedy, speedy fast, but. Like thrash, uh, yeah, thrash like, like thrashy, you know. You know, but a little bit of punk feel, a little but bit. The new we songs, yeah, more punk. Like, you know, like different genres, punk. we try to put it all together, which we, I think we've been doing a good job. Like, it really, like each song sounds like, you know, how the different bands like Dream Theater, every album sounds like a different band. That's right. Different you know, influence, different, influences. We're, we're trying to do that, but we Don't just, forget Black Flag. It took us all these Black years. Black Flag. It's never too late. Yeah, About Dick Kennedy. Black Black. There you go. <laughs> Henry Rollins. Henry to, Rollins, yeah. good band. Yeah. Absolutely. Rollins band. Absolutely. So, um, Whiplash was a good show. Oh, yeah, we, oh, that we played with show. Whiplash. Huh? We did with, Black uh, at Blackthorn 51. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That was a great show. Even Tony came up after, he's like, Great sound. He liked the sound. Yeah, that's right. He was like, "Wow, how do you get that sound?" They're still playing uh, out too. They're good guys. They yeah. just did a show, I think, uh, a couple of months ago. Yeah, yeah, I saw that advertised. Um, did did has has Nervous Wreck played like outside of the New York, New York City, New Jersey area? Um, we did play a show. My my sister at the time was dating uh, some guy who owned a farm in New Jersey. This was back in the day in 80, 80, 89. And this is a good story. Too, we just right? did a music he, venue in Jersey. He he we, we he had us play out Chip's there. He goes, Bring your equipment. We had a friend, uh, I forgot his name, uh, Robbie. He had a van, and he was he was driving by oh, on the farm. And we we didn't even know him actually, right? He said, "Hey, do you want to give us a ride? Uh, you want to hang out with us?" And right, right, we just met him. Yeah, the, yeah. Now you're on the van, Freddie. I think his name was. We took all our equipment and went out we to just, Jersey. We just we just flew down the on a flute. We're like, "All right, cool, <laughs> let's do this." Yeah. And we went out and had a party over the weekend. And we right? played at the at there. We, we played had quite a few people there in, yeah, in uh, cool. Freehold, New Jersey. I mean, oh, okay. I remember that one. That's cool. <laughs> but yeah, the guy was just driving by. We never even knew him. Flagged him down. He had a van. We said, "This guy has a van." Yeah. It happened to be, he was a cool guy. He said, all right, let's go, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, went out to 
I forgot what happened to him that night. He was all, you know. Oh, we were drinking. Yeah. But, uh, that, I don't know. You know. I don't remember too much that night. <laughs> we're going to try to do now a small little tour. We never, he, we never really pretty much got out of yeah. you know, New York, New Jersey. We wanted, we wanted because when you're younger, money. there's never any money. Yeah, for sure. You know, there's yeah. no money. You know what yeah. I mean? You're not making a lot of money. You're making a few bucks here, a few bucks there. you got to buy equipment. Yeah. So basically, but now we're pretty much adults, aren't we? There we are. And we're going to try to do a small tour. Maybe Albany. There's a big scene up in Albany. Uh -huh. you got Connecticut. Right, we got a whole yeah. bunch of areas. Toad's there's place. Jersey. There's a whole bunch of different spots we're going to try to Hagen's play. Yeah. We have a show coming up now, December 21st, at Olives in Nyack, and we go on at 9:15. You know, so if anybody yeah. wants to come and see the show, it's a good show. We're going to have shirts, and we're going to have uh, CDs PJ's there and, and USBs. After that, or before that, I'm not sure. We got yet. PJs coming up next. We're not yeah. waiting for a date on that one. And there's a couple other venues that we're going to be playing, but we're waiting to hear back from like Tim Trip Squad. who's talking yeah. about Ding Bats, maybe, and maybe yeah. a couple of places in the city. We're, we're still, we just finished the recording, so we're just now starting to branch out and play. And we got a couple of these yeah. rolling. There's a, this guy, Brian Cannon, too. He was from the Bronx. I think he lives upstate now, but he wants to put together a nice outdoor festival thing again, like like we did. That at was good. Have yeah. a store club. We should do so that. He, he was going to do that this year, but he couldn't get the permit or something. Uh-huh, so. uh-huh. So, um, between the very first recording and the recording that you just finished, um, were, were there recordings in between the two? Why don't you walk yes. us through some of those? It, 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 so, it was Mark Nathan was the first time we did it, and then we did, Dominic does, he does a, has his own business, he does his a lot Security, I do security, security and stuff, and there was a, uh, a uh, place out called Legend Studios. Yeah. It was Bob from Legend Studios in Central Ice of Long Island. And um, I did some work for him, and uh, in return, you know, we got a recording out of it. And we uh -huh. did the first CD, which was Last Call. And it's got, uh, it's a good song, it's yeah, got some good yeah. songs yeah. on it. The and then we did another one with Lou singing, and it was uh, called Misery. It's a small EP. Yeah, John yeah, wasn't right. on that one at the time. No, I wasn't on that one. He was singing, Lou Cortez was singing for those songs for when we, at that period, you know. Wasn't there another one in Cherry Hill? Um, it's Cherry Staten Hill Island, was Staten a, Island. We recorded it that now. We might have oh, done it. Yeah, it was probably yeah. a live recording, but I don't think we ever. Yeah, it was live. We probably never did anything with it. It was just, you know, I think it was a rehearsal, live rehearsal. Really? We didn't yeah. record that? That was Joe Casola singing. Yeah, oh. we really didn't do it. Yeah, that. we didn't record with Joe too much. No. Oh, okay, I see. Different no. kind of feel. That was, again, like I talked about earlier, the chemistry just, yeah. it just wasn't there. I see, I see. Um, so. So if I understand it correctly, Ner Nervous Wreck was pretty active between when you first got together in 2007, or were there any breaks in between uh, in that period? Actually, well? uh, we first, when we, Nervous Wreck, we first got together in 88. Yeah. I mean, uh, after, yeah, after 2007, we, we took a hiatus a few years, but then I, I bought a house up in Somers, New York, and I had a, a, like a recording studio in the basement, a really rehearsal too, recording. And we used to play there, and we started playing again after my brother passed away, a couple of years after, right? And that's when we started playing. We played a show down in uh, Manhattan, right when we first got back together with Nicky Camp. What Nicky Camp, we played, play? oh, Don Hills. Don Hills, Don Hills uh -huh. we played, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, that's right. We played the Pushy Cat Lounge. Pushy Cat Lounge, Lounge we played, uh -huh. yes, we right. did. Yep. Yeah. We did a few shows down there. And was it Bay the Wolf? Bay Wolf. We played the Bay Wolf, which was a, which was a oh, showcase. Bond Street Sunday. Cafe. Oh, Bond Street Cafe. Bond Street yeah. Cafe. Yeah. That's the one. It was that a showcase was a, for the yeah. show at Sundance. They wanted to hear us, yes. and they booked us at Sundance the yes. following week, yeah. if I remember, in Long Island. That's right. Right? Yeah. Wow. Uh, and so for your most recent recording, I know it's with Jean Christophe, who's recorded a lot of uh, Bronx bands, um, among a lot of other bands, I know, but yeah. had had you all met him before this? How'd you hear about him? Um, yeah. Yeah, we didn't we, I had met him to a friend of mine, and okay. uh, once we once we met JC, it was like literally love at first sight. The guy is yeah, a, he's a guy, genius. Yeah. He's a gentleman and a scholar, and he knows his stuff. And let me tell you. He made yeah, this thing did. sound phenomenal. It really, really has a great sound to it. He gave me a great drum sound. He gave John a great guitar sound. He gave Cliff a great vocal sound and bass sound, and he mixed it. He did a really good job. He really did, and I would recommend him to anybody. He really is yeah, a phenomenal, really right, John? You agree? Absolutely. Yeah, and, he, and he's a saint because, let me tell you, he worked with us. So <laughs> we're all jumping at him, do this, do that, but he's yeah. just, he keeps his cool, and he's just a phenomenal guy. He really it, is. it only took us six hours altogether to do that, too. Yeah, the this is a six-hour wow. recording with everything. It was everything oh, was on. Yeah. There were really no, no mistakes except for a few punch-ins here and there with yeah, the guitar no, and maybe with the vocals, but other than that, it's pretty much a live recording. Yeah. Wow. 
It's a solid Larry Ford, so I'm happy. And JC's a great guy. And we'll be doing another two songs with him also. We have two more. We're going to be doing uh, Plandemic 2.0, The Kill, and World War III. We're going to go back up to see him, and we're going to do another recording with him. Wow. Yeah, hopefully. Wow. Um, so I know that I know that each of you has mentioned like other maybe side side projects that you've been a part of while Nervous Wreck has been going on. Um, you know, maybe we'll go down the line and you all can talk a little bit about the other projects you've been involved in yeah. and who's been in them and things like that over the years. Um, well, the, all the other bands I played with were short, more of like a jam session kind yeah. of thing. They weren't really 100% serious, you know? So it didn't, none of it really went anywhere. It's just like a jam session thing. Let's, sure. let's get together and play and we, we ad lib or write with whoever knew what songs and just jam sessions. Yeah. I didn't really have, well that was my, you know, my thing. I didn't really go anywhere with any of the bands. Sure. But uh, these guys did, they played some other shows, other bands. Well Cliff started with another uh, another band called Peace Revolver and then they had yeah. the drummer and of course, here we go again, Dom, could you play drums again? Yeah, here we go again, Jack pulls Hutch me in again. Playing drums. You wind up, you wind up. And it was a decent project, but honestly the chemistry wasn't there because it wasn't John, it wasn't Glenn, David but Pete. we dealt what we could do, we did the best we could do, but you know what, it fell apart. We played one or two shows, we yeah. did do a recording, but it just wasn't the same. It just it's like, you know, when you have camaraderie and you have brotherhood like this, you know, you just, yeah. it doesn't, I mean, when I'm playing with John and I'm playing with Cliff, I know what they're going to do before they even do it, so there's, a, there's you know what I'm talking about, John? Okay, I know have, exactly yeah. what's going to happen. We have that intuition. We, yeah. we could not practice for six months and we get together, it sounds like we just started playing, we, we never missed a beat, literally. And when you have a chemistry like that, you, you just, you know, you don't want to lose any of that. That's right. Know? That's right. And what kind of, um, what kind of sound was Peace Revolver? More of a, a, a rocking, a rock, like more of a rock tone. Yeah, more it wasn't. Rock, a, it was metal, but like rock metal. Like rock yeah. metal. It uh, wasn't. It wasn't a. It, it was okay, but it wasn't like. Uh, Way down south. Well, I would like, say it would be more like. Um, yeah, if we had to pick a band, who would it be? Pick yeah. a band. It was like a different type, type yeah, of sound, did, but did, I would probably it say it was. Geez, what would you categorize that? Maybe like uh, a little bit like White Zombie, but you know. Okay. I mean, yeah, I would yeah, say more like a White Zombie. I but, see. But without the, you know, the, different guitar without the sound. Yeah, different. Yeah. Without yeah. the like uh, industrial industrial stuff. stuff yeah, exactly. Right. Just without that kind of talent. Raw. Without <laughs> yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. that talent, Rob Zombie's a phenomenal right. I mean, of just. I think what happened was when you guys, like, introduced me. I came down one night for, like, to like an audition, if you want to call it that. And I plugged in my amp at a Marshall valve state at the time. And I plugged in and I saw the look on Dom's face when I hit that first zhunk zhunk, like the Marshall sound with the low end, the crunch. Because the guy Joe, he didn't have that heavy sound on the guitar. Uh -huh. It was more of a cleaner rock sound. But when he heard that zhunk zhunk, I saw Dom's eyes light up. He was like, <laughs> oh, fuck, we got to have him. Yeah, we did. Actually, it Pete, was, like, was Pete. Not, yeah. far, not long after that, we put the band back together. Yeah. It wasn't uh -huh. very long after that. They were like, uh, we gotta play heavy stuff. Yeah, we, just, <laughs> we, we wouldn't feel it. It's fun, it's fun. Peace it's really enjoy good, it. but different, different genre. Which one there was no all? chemistry, John. I'm telling you, there was no, no chemistry. Nah, there's just no chemistry. Yeah. Uh, it was fun, yeah. We did, uh, doing a guy, uh, my friend Jack, a favor, playing bass for a little while, but then, you know, Jack didn't, they didn't like Jack in there. Uh, being in the band too much, but we, we did a recording with that. How many songs? Like five songs, I think. Five, I think. Five. Where'd you do that recording? Grab, grab your piece. We did that in Tarrytown. Okay. Uh, right, uh, what's his name? Michael his Michelangelo. Name. Right? Okay. I don't remember his name. You, you found the place. Yeah. I mean. Mike D'Amico, I think his name was. Okay. He, he uh, was a sound guy in Tarrytown. Good, you're a good guy. And I set up, you know. But I'm telling you, that, 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 you know, the CD's pretty good. I mean, you know, if we do something with it again, you know, like revamp all the songs that we wrote, you know. <laughs> And, and Cliff, what about any other um, side projects for you besides that one? Uh, I remember, uh, I forgot, remember that band I go to audition for, Fuel? Okay. I think it was. I think it was the band Fuel. I was going to play with them, but I was like, nah, I want this band. I want this band. To. But you also just did something on Bluegrass, didn't you? Well, but, well mm -hmm. you know, my friend Alan uh, Lighty, I just, he does Bluegrass stuff, and I was doing a little recording with that. You know, I just love all, the whole array of music, you know. Sure. Honestly. I mean, metal is, is my main thing, but I can listen to the Beatles and Sting. You know, I don't know, it's hard to explain, Absolutely. you know what I mean? I just, uh, 
but musician. And then listen to you know uh, something heavy, you know, wicked afterwards. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's but right. I haven't really been in any other bands other than that, other than this band, as far as and Peace Revolver. Yeah. One band's enough. It takes a lot of work. Is there a lot of it time? Is, uh, no, yeah, one band's enough. I mean, literally, Absolutely. right? Our friend Mike Casera had a, had a beach club up in New Rochelle. We used to oh, go up there and jam all before. the time. Back with oh, yeah, Back with Point. Oh, yeah. we used to practice yeah. there all the time. Yeah, like on the my, weekend my when he owned it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah, we used to jam there. That's that's because we kept playing, but not together. Kind of, you know? but it was more of a jam fun thing than a serious band. It was fun though. Was it fun? It was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. We just did a lot of covers and kind of, you know. Then that's why we wrote these songs. A lot of them are pertaining to a lot of stuff we did back then in the day. Uh, right. It's what like Dom did with the club, you know. Like uh, we did a song Johnny's Jib. It's about John. Like, but something happened. Like down the block, there used to be what was it? A, a priest or or some guy who used to say, what are you I, the guy. He said uh, the priest used to go walk down the block. <coughs> You guys kept me up all night with that electric diarrhea. That was Tom Reagan. Tom Reagan? <laughs> what the police with that electric, oh. electric diarrhea. That's yeah. what he told us. <laughs> one of the guys would come see us all the time. Oh, Tom but he, Reagan. He'd put on a brogue and he would talk like an Irish brogue and he would <laughs> say, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, he'd be, have a couple of, you know, a couple of tips back there and he'd, he'd, he'd say, put on Irish brogue. He'd keep me up with electric up. diarrhea. Yeah. yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was a lot of fun back in the day. That was over here, you know, right yeah. in Marshall Parkway. Uh huh. Yeah. All the best memories are from the Bronx, anyway. Oh, it really is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's then we want another song called FDA, which is you know F the FDA kind of thing. Right? Yeah, sure. But about you know what they're doing to us, what with the food and everything, you know. Sure. Like, but they're telling us it's good for us, and like, the pyramid, the food pyramid, should be turned upside down. Really, you that's know. Right. Just, it, it just yeah, for, for their own us. greed, yeah, they're, they're killing people with, with uh, what's out there. What they're saying is good to eat, you know. So I don't know that that kind of gets to me. Cause my, I believe my twin brother passed away in melon box syndrome, like you know. So like from diet, diet means a lot, you know, you know, as far as. But they don't tell you that. Now one doctor will tell you, you know, mm. you know, oh, you gotta just change your diet, you'll be okay, you know. Yeah. So we wrote a song about that, and then uh, another song about. Um, Road rage, Dominic Road, actually. <laughs> you can't this miss that in the Bronx, yeah, especially one. road rage. That's yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. So, so as far as the the lyrics go to your songs, have all of you kind of written, taken your your shot at written, writing the lyrics over the years? Yeah, we all we all pretty yeah, much collaborate. It's always a collaborate. collaboration. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I did a lot of the the newest stuff. I wrote most of the words for myself, and I because I didn't even know if I was going to sing. We had like Lou, but. I think us three, when we get together now, it's starting to more, you know, be more impactful with, with just three guys. You know, it's weird because I was explaining it with me singing, you know? Yeah. And why don't you all talk a little bit, I, I imagine it's probably very different now from what it was back then, but what was the songwriting process like for you all when you first got together? Um, like walk, uh, walk people through the process. Well, like you said, we pretty much kind of mesh. I would come up with an idea yeah, we'd for all... a rhythm part. Dom would come up with a drum part to that. And maybe he would hear another riff in his head because he plays guitar too. Yeah. Hey, try this in there. What do you think about this? And then Cliff would just jump in with a bass. We'd usually just structure the music. Yeah. And then Cliff would come up with his magic and just throw words well, over it, you know, uh -huh. basically. With whatever. A lot of but, bands write words first. We write the music first and then put the words to the music. Sure. Some people do it the opposite way. We don't. We don't for some reason. Yeah, that's just the way it kind of happens. But but, yeah. but the stuff that I come up with also, I, I tax John, don't I, John? Yeah. All the songs yeah, yeah. are taxing because none of it's straight four four picking. It's all it's all over the place. Uh -huh, it's, uh -huh. it's like chopped up. There's just sixty fourths in there. There's all kinds of shit going on. Uh huh. There's yeah. a lot happening. It's not that. easy to play. <laughs> well, people that. say, oh, it sounds like a lot of noise. Try to play it. I make, it, do it. It. I make yeah. it look easy, but yeah. it's not as easy as it looks. It's, for there's sure. a lot going on in those riffs. Yeah. I remember my, you know, my yeah. twin brother used to jam, they used to jam together too and just come up with some really good stuff later, right? I mean, do you guys oh, yeah. And yeah. what's really funny is if, we play, if we're playing a show and most of the guys are younger than we are, okay? We're in our 50s, middle yeah. 50s, all right? And the funny thing is when you see the younger guys playing, I know, and then they play, and then we go up, then we play, and we're playing harder and faster than they are, and they're like, man, you got, right or wrong, John, they don't expect, they don't you expect guys it. are friggin' fast, yeah. you guys play so fast and hard, 
because we're playing since we're your age. That's yeah. right. You know, yeah. we're playing forty years. That's right. If, if, you know, if we didn't take that hiatus or whatever, you know, I don't know. You know. No, but I the whole think. idea is, I was telling John this the other day. I said, John, you know, you play guitar now. I says, if you only played regular guitar, you didn't play with the way the way your style is now. Yeah. Right. If you didn't play, you could never learn it today. Oh no! You could never learn it today. It took years and years. It takes that thirty years to play. Like yeah, you're right. not going to learn that. It's not an easy way. thing to play. The double picking, triple picking, you no, know, no. alternate picking, yeah. even the drumming. I mean, it's hard to play like that. For no, sure. I know. For sure. Yeah. Has 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 your approach to like writing songs changed at all? Like, you know, since you all live well, I guess two of you live close to each other, but yeah. since you don't live, you know, see each other on a daily basis, and with the whole digital era and all, you can share things easier Is well it? mostly like you know we, we're, we're pretty much writing about everyday life we have another song called ai alien invasion that's what oh, everybody yeah. keeps talking about yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. we so have over, alien like, invasion you, uh, everyone's talking about which is basically over. about what could happen and then we have back to life which is cliff something that cliff came up with and he wrote is about you know bringing yourself back like a well, tony robbins type of deal like no, bringing yourself well, not, back yeah, not, from no. like you know from being you know rock bottom bring yourself back up you have a life to live do the best that you well, possibly can life. do yeah you someone down and fda down. is about you know tell, trying to tell the people you know listen to it it's a fun song listen to it and you know listen to the fact that they're putting sugar and carbohydrates and preservatives in all our food and you know what listen to it you know and rivalry is about you know Basically, a, a husband and it could be a, a brother and sister. They're constantly fighting for their parents' attention. Meanwhile, you're both brother and sister. What are you fighting over? Yeah. And of course, road race. So we pretty much try to write stuff about you know what people can relate to now. Sure. Stuff Every of you know of you know you go to work today. If I'm driving somewhere here and I got an idea, and I said you know road race. I'm driving all the time. John's on the road. You yeah. know, it's like this is something that people would want to hear. Road rage. Yeah. Yeah. We have and people are yeah. always eating and you know, spill something on them. <laughs> yeah, you MF this and that. You know, the people are going wild. So that's how it came into play with the, the newer writing style. Years ago, we would just write, you know, like, I don't know, we would just come up with an idea and just write it. But now it's like, you know, more of life lessons. Oh, like what's going on. Yeah, Things yeah. of, you know, of life, you know, try to, you know, in, enlighten people and let people know, yeah. you know, what the real deal is. You know, we would just to get help together people. at rehearsal and, and we would all get it down, get our parts down that we wanted. You know, that was a good, the good thing about us as far as, you know, we, all you got to do is tell John, I want this part here. Just once, show him once and he knows it. That's what's good about it, you know. But, um, do it again yeah. yeah so why why don't each of you all talk about um you you shared uh you know your first instruments um but would be interested in hearing you know some of you, you might not be able to name all of them but some of the different instruments you've had over the years oh Ari pro 2 right yeah that's here. The, had the every pro 2 tw double z deluxe if i remember correctly and then i had a um had a gibson les paul I had a BC Rich Ironbird, which I still have. I had a Kelly Jackson, which, the file, which I still have. Oh, yeah. And uh, then I got the, the BC Rich, with, what is it? Um, it's a Wallock, yeah. neck uh -huh. solid, but with EMGs, and it sounds amazing. That's, that's what I'm using now, great guitar. That's your go-to right now? Oh yeah, you gotta hear this thing, it's amazing, yeah. Um, pretty much, I still keep all of my, a couple of acoustics, some Fenders, it would talk a and uh, you know I like to mess around with those from time to time. Sure. Just for writing or getting the fingers going in the morning, you know. But I, I stick to the BC Rich. I like the feel of that one. Absolutely, and it's such a awesome looking guitar too. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's fretless. No, there's no uh, markings on the fretboard. So uh huh. Just at the octave on the 12th fret. Sure. That was nice. Mother Pro wrapped around the whole thing. It's a nice guitar. But uh, I like that one. And Cliff, what about you? Yeah, I uh, my first bass was obviously the uh, that Montoya, the Sunburst Montoya that I had, and uh, put that out to California, and I was able to put, play in a jazz band with it, uh, you know. But then my first band, I mean, my first bass afterwards was a, a, a blue uh, Jackson. Oh, uh, okay. That was a good bass. Remember the blue Jackson I had? Yeah, it was a nice one. And then I had a, a, a BC Rich Mockingbird Red. Which was really nice to have that really long neck, like 27 frets or whatever. And then uh, the bass I have now is a, a, um, is a Schechter, Triple uh, X it's called. It's got like, you know, the inlays are like ladies, you know, stiletto or whatever. You know, it's pretty cool. That that kind of complements his bass. I mean, uh -huh. his guitar, sorry. Same uh, 
you know, uh, wrapped Same around deal. Mother of Pearl and everything like that. So it complements it, you know. But I mean, yeah, that's the only. I think I also have a, a, an Ibanez acoustic bass that I'm, you know, I love uh, acoustics are really good too when you when you practice and you get that sound like without sure. having to plug in, you know. But um, other than that, uh, I, I, Aria Pro Two was my other first bass. So it's all coming back to me now. Um, that was the, what I had in California, I came back with the first bass I had with you guys, the Aria Pro Two ZZB. Deluxe, custom. It was like half black, half white. What's that one you had look like this table? Alembic, I think. Oh, right. Alembic too. Okay, oh, yeah, uh, five string. Oh, okay. I started playing the five string too a little bit. I couldn't, but I feel more comfortable with the four. <laughs> you know? Sure. But uh, I, I think that's it. That's all the bases I had, you know. I know I had a Fender position once. No, yeah. Sure. You know, like the same kind of, like a, uh, Steve Harris from Art and Maine. I wanted to get that sound, you know, so bad. <laughs> you know, I don't think I ever accomplished it, but it was, that was a nice bass, too. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Dom, what about you? My first set was the uh, drum, cap, drum, drum craft, which I said earlier, uh -huh. and then I went to a Pearl Export, and it was a great set. And then we took the hiatus, and um, I pretty much now I play Alesis, which is the uh, mesh head, which is the mesh end, which is the uh, electronic set. And most of the times when we play bars and stuff, when we play clubs, they have their own background. Yeah, they're they're sure. They tell you to bring only the cymbals, the snare drum, the seat, and you know, your sticks. Because you can't bring a whole beautiful set anymore. So you know, most of the times it's, they don't want to waste that time of you setting everything up and then have to take it down for the next right. band. So now, it's pretty much it stays up on the stage or it stays on the, the little area where you're going to play. Yeah. And then basically you just bring up your peripherals and you just add your snare drum, your cymbals, your pedal, your seat. And you know, that's pretty much Sticks, yeah. what they what you pretty much do today. So pretty much I'm going to be buying, probably buying another acoustic set once we start doing, if we do do a small tour, I will buy a, uh, a new acoustic set. And we sure. do have, I do have, we have a, a, a red a pro kit, pro yeah. kit like pro. Pro, that's ready to go for anything, you know, yeah. down in my, my house. I have in the basement, yeah. Okay, it's got to well. change the skins on it. And uh, so, you know, any of you could answer this, or if you want to, you know, designate one person, that's fine. Um, but where do you want to see uh, Nervous Wreck, like, a, you know, go in the next, um, you know, little bit? Well, uh, I know, I mean, there are so many bands out there, I know that. A lot of, a lot of it's who you know and what you know, you know, obviously. That's right. And, uh, Obviously, if you can play stuff that's good, that's going to keep them there. Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think that uh, we played out. We ha we haven't played out like as much as we should have. I know that, but uh, we played out enough where I think we could. If anything ever did happen, we we would be ready to, to play out and do like a little tour. I would just like I wouldn't mind doing a little tour, of, you know, different areas, you know, of the country, just for fun, you know, if we could, whatever, even. Uh, yeah, so that we play at uh, Barking Dog Recording Studio in Brewster, and uh, Richie is the sound guy. He works on the. He's in a band called Sub Zero. He plays uh, bass for them and uh, or guitar. No guitar. He's a guitar player. He plays bass for Shatter Hand. And we played with them too at Olive's too. Yeah. But um, I wouldn't mind just playing. I'm not, I'm not saying make it make it big they or were on tour you know, there. but just a little tour and somehow, you know what I mean, to play out uh, play all different places instead of just you know where we used to play. And, you know, obviously work is a big factor, you know, sure. so, but it would be, uh, it would be wonderful if we did start playing out, like got a chance to play out, and uh, I'm not even saying play out, make it big, but just play out and have fun, you know? That's right. That's it. It's about having fun, that's yeah, the key. Just it's fun. about work, we, you work, work as hard as it is, you know, I mean, it's, it's no, no reason why we can't go out and play on a weekend and enjoy ourselves. Yeah. We just got to keep writing songs. That's it, and see what happens. You know, because that's that's the that's pretty much a key of life. You enjoy yourself. Yeah, yeah. If it doesn't become a fun and enjoy yourself, then why bother doing it? That's right. Like if I don't it's enjoy playing with these guys, I wouldn't play with them. Because yeah. why? Work is enough, and it's, a, it's enough stress and aggravation. So you know what? And road rage. Yeah. So yeah. why not right. pretty much you know have a good time and play with guys that you enjoy playing with? You know. That's right. Yeah. That's the key. I mean, I'm sure you guys feel the same way. If it becomes Absolutely. a chore, why bother? Mm -hmm. You know, oh, yeah, I agree. definitely. But that's got to be fun. As we keep, you know, yeah, keep playing and keep. And unless you're a musician, nobody will understand when you get a call from your your members and say, you know what, I got this great riff. I can't wait for hearing on Sunday. Like we're yeah, gonna yeah. practice 
Today is Sunday. We're going to be practicing next Sunday. I can't wait to play the two new songs that we wrote. Right. I'm way looking forward to that. Right, John? It's yeah, like, you know, it's like you're looking forward to, like, when you're a little kid, you're looking forward to Christmas or your birthday. I'm looking forward to hearing how this yeah, goes. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited about it, you know? And that's the passion and what drives us all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I know this is just a, you know, demo tape or whatever, but, I mean, you know, we... I, we we set it out there and see if anybody likes it or not. You know, I think yeah. it's catchy, not because we're on it, yeah, but I think it's a catchy. It's not overdrawn. I think it's about issues of today. I says, and you know, I think it's pretty much you know, it's something that may stick. And I, look at it, look at it this way: if you throw enough things against the wall, something's going to stick eventually. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> if you throw enough stuff against the wall, something's going to stick. Well, that's what I'm saying. We we all have to have the heart to want to do something to go out there and do it. That's what I believe too. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know. And so, uh, do I understand correctly, Dom, did, did your son play on all of the tracks? No, songs? actually, my son, Dominic, he's, I named him after me and after my dad, and uh, he's on Road Rage on the slow part. He's playing uh, keyboards, and ah. we changed the keyboards to a pipe organ, and he's playing on that. Yeah. Wow. He's on two sections, and he's very excited about it. My son does play classical piano, and he's a phenomenal piano player. And he wrote a couple of really cool songs, which I will definitely let you know, Stephen, here. He's a phenomenal player. And he likes the metal genre, too. So he's got metal yeah. and he's got classical. He's just a phenomenal player. Yeah. Not because he's my son, because you guys seen him play. Oh, he's good. He, yeah. He's a phenomenal composer. And he's also a great writer, too. He can write stories. He's a phenomenal writer. He's, wow. uh, my, son is not, my son is more of a... Um, uh, an artist type of kind of kid. He's not like, you know, like John's a construction guy, you know, I do, you know, wiring and Cliff is in construction also. So he's not more of a root, like a rugged kind of kid. He's more of like a, an artistic and his his style is really awesome. And he, he, he's right working on another song for us co- called uh, We Do Not Comply. He didn't oh, finish okay. it. Yeah, yeah. He wrote it on the keyboard. It's a really cool song. Oh, it it, it too, pretty yeah. much sounds like a system of a down type of song. Oh, yeah, he likes well, that too. Yeah. He likes this and, uh, Yeah, so I think it's, uh, and he, has, he says, Dad, a lot of backing vocals in here. Mm. So he's actually working on something also. And he wants us to maybe see how it works out. So I said, we'll try it on. We'll see how it goes. So, uh, you know, this might be, might be too like personal of a question if it is you don't have to answer but like you want to talk about what it's like to to be on a recording with your son like um no that's pretty cool i said you know that, that's awesome the fact that he wanted to do it because i said dom if you don't want to do it you don't have to do it no dad what do you want me to do so i said okay dom i'll give you the parts and you're going to com- create you know the uh, the music to it and he sat there and, you know, and he pretty much we worked on it together him and i it was really cool that's awesome that's so cool um yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting because there's now a couple, couple uh, Bronx bands uh, that started in either eighty the late eighties early nineties that are passing the torch to, you know, the next generation. It's always yeah, fun. It's cool to see that. Um, Kilowatts, remember that guy from Kilowatts? Yeah. I forgot his name. Oh, to Kilowatts! Yeah, yeah, I've heard people mention them too. Are you are you in touch with any of the Kilowatts? No, that's Fred was the guy. Freddie, Freddie with the bass player, I think. I think player. I haven't yeah. talked to him in a lot. Of I haven't years. talked to him in a long time. Uh, he remembers the hang out. He's, yeah. he's mentioned us. He knows who we uh-huh. are. He's a good guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's what I'm saying. It's good to see a lot of the band. Uh, what is that? Uh, we played uh, the Chance Theater a lot too, up in uh, Poughkeepsie. Yeah. Poughkeepsie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, did a couple of hardcore shows hardcore, there, and, hardcore. and regular shows. We did the uh, what was that place? The upstairs one, propane, the loft, the, the, the loft. loft yeah, we played the loft. up there. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Wow. Well, the chance is gone now, and it's they're gone. actually Somebody redoing the it. they're yeah. redoing the whole venue. It's going to be a music venue, but I don't know what kind of music is going to be. Maybe classical theater. They're going to uh-huh. do something with it. They're changing wow. the whole the whole area, mm-hmm. the whole spot there. All yeah. right. Wow. wow. Um, well, so I have a couple questions that I always ask you know, at the end of these, but before we get to those questions, is there anything else about Nervous Wreck or any of the other bands, any other part of your life um, that you want to talk about that we haven't talked about yet? I think I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to go back and record the next two songs. Yeah, I'm yeah, waiting for the next one. Can't wait to hear that. Uh, yeah. finish the yeah, album. Better, well, that's the demo tape, though. So we're gonna, when it's complete, it'll be an album. We're gonna add more yep. songs to yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So in that case, we'll, we'll get to the, the final couple questions. Um, uh, first question, uh, um, how would you say the Bronx uh, shaped uh, the sound of Nervous Drag? If it shaped it at all, you know, maybe it didn't at all, but 
um, how would you say the Bronx shaped you? I would say sound? the Bronx shaped me as a person, as, as my upbringing from the Bronx. I mean, it can't, I wouldn't be the person who I am today if it wasn't yeah. for the Bronx. Yeah, right. yeah. I don't know about these guys, but Our I can, because Cliff was in California, yeah. but that's right, that's right. I'm born and raised in the Bronx. I played baseball. I, I am from the Bronx, and that's, that's my roots. If I go to Florida, they say to me, can you say these words for me? Because you have such a Bronx accent. Uh -huh. <laughs> they just, I mean, it's just unbelievable. And um, like I said, I owe it all to the Bronx. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The Bronx. Uh, to the Bronx, definitely. Made, made me, especially, you know, I had to be, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, obviously, you know, and I just, uh, it, it gave me a lot of, uh, I know, a lot of feeling for, for music, obviously, you know, uh, rap, rock at the time, rap, uh, rap, rap rock, I think it was. Yeah, sure. Um, with like a Dougie Fresh, you know, all the time, listening to that kind of music was, was pretty cool. And then going home and put on Iron Maiden, you know, that, that's what made my day, you know. <laughs> but, uh, and I got to tell you one more thing, John, I guess you want to mention something. There's nothing like growing up in a building in the Bronx, because let me tell you, when you're in a building, you have all multicultural people in the building. And when you were a kid, nobody locked their doors. Their doors were slightly ajar with maybe a step ladder or a, a chair sitting there. You would smell Italian food, you would smell American food, you would smell Spanish food, uh -huh. you smell Norwegian food, just all different kinds. And, no, and you'd knock on somebody's door, come in, and there was never an issue. Mm -hmm. So that's why, that's, that's how the, it yeah. should be today, but it won't, it's not like that today, but no, it should be anymore. today. No, you, but yeah, that's the upbringing, yeah. like I said, that's because that's my upbringing from the Bronx. Oh, yeah. also, I owe it all yeah. to the Bronx. Yankees. My street smarts. The Yankees, uh, the, the high school, Lehman High School, I mean, I owe it all to the Bronx. Everything I have to the Bronx. Yeah, I don't regret anything. Not at all. I wouldn't trade it, but I wouldn't trade my upbringing for nothing. Yeah. No. And I'd still be, li we'd still be living down here if, but, you know. How, 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 and the funny thing is, I may live upstate, but most of my jobs are in the Bronx. Yeah, you yeah. always I do there. all the municipality security work for Westchester Square. I do work over here on... Uh, Jerome Avenue. I do work for the Peak Keepers House over here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I mean, I'm all over the Bronx. I'm st I haven't ever left the Bronx. I may not reside in the Bronx, for but sure. I all my work is in the Bronx. For sure. And I love coming down here. It's no problem. For sure. And even though I have road rage, I wrote the song. I don't have road rage. I just drive, and the car goes where it's got to go. <laughs> yeah, we know there are a lot of good people too around. We have a lot of friends that still here. You know. Uh, yeah. That, that are kind of stuck here, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but, sure, sure. But then again, they wouldn't leave it for anything, too, a couple of them, you know. So the Bronx is definitely, well, it's done a it's number on us, you know. For yeah, sure. So you definitely. could take the guys out of the Bronx, but you can't take the Bronx out of the guys. <laughs> That's, That's true. Right. It's the truth. That's oh, yeah. right. Um, so the the final question, yeah, ask it a little differently depending on, you know, each band and all. This, I guess it'll be a little more historical for you all. Um, uh, so, you know, when you all were playing with bands like, you know, Kilowatts, or at least, you know, here in Kilowatts, yeah. other bands like Broomhelda, you know, other bands from around the Bronx, was there anything that, you know, like, say if you all played with bands elsewhere, was there anything that set your sound, like, apart being from the Bronx at all? Would you say there was anything, you know, kind of distinctive about Bronx metal at the time, or was it just kind of part of the general I, I New guess York just, scene? just for them... It, just for us announcing that we're from the Bronx kind of gave them, you know, a lot of times, like, you know, oh, that's the band from the Bronx. I, I, oh, they're, they're local there in the city, let me, you know. Yeah. So we got the, a, lot of, a lot of that back in the day, you know. You too, right, Don? And I would say, John, just because you're from the Bronx also, you would want a badass sound. I do. Well, yes. They, that, that's always, the kick. Always exactly. needed a sound that would hit you in the chest. That's it. You know, you have to feel it. Absolutely. So I needed that sound. That's why I always use as many speakers as I could, loud, turn it up as loud as you can. You know, I like, like playing loud, what did I tell you? <laughs> Absolutely. And I think for a, for a three-piece, which is the, basically a triangle, an upside-down triangle, like you said earlier, <laughs> right. we make a lot, we, we'd sound pretty damn good, we make a lot of power. We you know, do. And if we did do a tour, we're always going to say we're from the Bronx. Absolutely. Right? Definitely. Yeah. And, and Bronx, uh, hopefully born and raised. They'll have like some, some more uh, places open up at Blackthorn, you know, yes. or whatever. I know. That, you know, we can have more bands play live. That would be cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, well, anything else you all want to add before we wrap it up today? Uh, just, uh, 
thank you again for having us. You know, yeah, thanks yeah, for thank, you, thank you very I much, mean, society. Nice, yeah. Thank you and, very much. You know, with whatever brain cells we, we have left, you know. <laughs> <can remember. laughs> well, thank you all so much for for being here. Definitely uh, an honor to have uh, uh, a band with y'all's history here. So, thank you all. Cool. Thank you. All right.